We did it. Hello. We made it, man. We did it. We got two shows. We did it, Campbell. We're done. Yay. We're done. We can wrap it up. We've done everything. It's 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 not a phase. We're going through. We've done two shows. How you doing, buddy? Good. Yeah? Good? Good. Yeah. <laughs> we have to practice looking opposite directions right here if we're talking to each other, don't we? Um, yeah. I say we uh, let's kind of get right into it. You want to do that? Sure. Uh, with uh, We're going to do a little segment we call... What happened last time? A little segment called What Happened Last Time. There it is right there. Um, uh, this is my machine right here. Uh, what I thought we would do during this segment is we would go through and uh, let me start up some music, by the way. So we got some music going in here. And uh, I thought we would run through what we did last time, best to our recollection. So it's not going to be an exact and it's not going to be a preview it, or, or previously kind of clips. I'm just going to run through and try to do what we did last time uh, as quickly as we can. So um, as I recall, we downloaded and installed Unity. Yeah. Right. And then we downloaded and, install and installed a Visual Studio. Yeah. And downloaded and installed Visual Studio. We downloaded and installed uh, Code Shirley Rush. Dev is in the house. Hello, Surly Dev. Surly Dev is in the house. Welcome, Surly Dev. Glad you're with us. Um, back over here. So uh, I'm going to create a new game. That's what we did, right? Yeah. New. What do I have to do? Uh, Choose the version, I guess. Is that right? Well, your screen just went really blurry for me. Okay. It went blurry, huh? Yeah. Should be. Give it a check to catch up. It could be that... Uh, or grainy. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to create a 3D project. I'm going to call it... Uh, what should I call it? First Kids Code? Sure. Project? Uh, yep. Surly Dev's asking, Campbell, how are you doing? Good. And uh, sure. asking how I'm doing too. Sure. I'm doing pretty good as well. We're both uh, doing okay. We're, we're just kind of, we were prepping and getting ready for today. So uh, we're both good. Thanks, Surly. And how are you, Surly? I'm going to type in project here. First Kids Code Project. All right, we'll create it. I'll go ahead and put it there in that location. I'm okay with that for now. And it's starting up Unity. I see it on another monitor, so it's got the startup screen. By the way, here I'm looking at code on Campbell's machine here in the background. We're doing a live share connection between the two of us, which allows both of us to work in one file, um, which can be useful. Or both of us work in, in uh, two different files, but both on his machine. Unity is still starting up. <coughs> Surly Dev, when I asked him how he was doing, he says, uh, <coughs> I can't complain. Thank you. Then Surly adds, well, I could complain, but it would do no good. And Surly says, uh, live share is awesome. Which, uh, which I really like here. Hold on a second. Unity's on my other screen. It's given me this. And let me kind of bring it up to the main monitor here so you can see it. There's a new version of the Unity Editor available for download. Ooh, I'm going to uh, skip the version for right now. Maybe download that later. So we've got uh, created a new, new s scene here called Sample Scene. It's got some light and it's got a camera. We learned that we could come in here and kind of click on these, move them around. We learned we could click this button here and kind of rotate, spin the light around, change change where it is, the sun is. We yeah. learned that we could like take, for example, our camera and move it as well if we wanted to move our camera. Uh, also, we learned undo, undoes our changes, and redo, redoes our changes. Redo, control do you remember? Y. Control Y was that right there. Uh, it certainly says uh, live share is awesome. I got my uh, colleagues and a trainer to use it once when we had an external trainer come in. Yeah, ah. live share is great. Uh, all right, oh. then we learned that we could drop things into our game. So we would create a 3D object, a cube. We drop it down there. There's my cube, and then I could change its scale. So I could come in here and say I want this to be a thousand long, and now I've just made it a thousand long. Yeah. Or maybe I want to make this uh, in the expiration. Look who's here! Is that Retro CRT? It's Retro CRT. Look at that icon, I love it. 
That's awesome, Retro CRT. Welcome. Uh, and so I can change the properties here. This is the properties are grouped over here in the inspector by groups, and they're named like this one's called transform. So this contains different things that allow me to transform the shape or the rotation. Uh, the position, maybe not when I say shape, the scale is better to say, right? In fact, here are the things I can transform. And then I have other groups of things down here that we learned about. Um, and then we learned also, so there's, I can make like a track right here. We learned that yeah. if I like right, if I middle click and drag the mouse, on the mouse, I can kind of move this around. And, and if, if I right, right click, you can move like, uh, I can rotate yeah. around some point that's hard to tell. Uh, I think it's about 1.5 Campbell's old. What is, uh, so, wait, 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 afternoon. What, wait, what's 1.5 Campbell's old? What? Afternoon, all retro said. Wait, may I miss something in the chat room? Oh, my icon. Oh. Wow, that's a cool icon. 1.5 Campbell's. Uh, all right, so I can middle click and drag and I can right click and drag the mouse like this. So I kind of move around in here. Um, the thing that's kind of cool, the other thing that we kind of learned here, let me zoom out a little bit here, is that if this is my shape and I made it a thousand, if I make it like say 200, look, look what's happening here. There's 220, 200, It's 2, extending 000. on both sides from it, the middle. It is, which means that middle point right there is probably zero, zero, zero. It's these three right here. It starts out at zero. Okay. Zero, I think. Um, by the way, we got a new segment on the show we added for this show called Show Me Something Cool. And that's where Campbell preps and I prep something and we show each other and it's been secret. See, it's been kept secret the whole time. So I don't know if mine's like as cool as Campbell's, but I don't know. Well, yeah, we'll see what, see what, wait, certainly says my avatar is 3.8 Campbell's old. 3.8 No, 4.8 Campbell's old. 4.8? Yeah. 4.8 wow, Campbell's old. that's an old icon. Okay. All right. All right. So let's go back. Let's make it like, uh, I don't know, we'll make it 2,000. I'll make it 1,000 because that's what we did before. All right. Now, one of the other things we can do in the position, we can move it. If I, if I make this 1,000 wide and I want to have one end of the track be right there at 0, 0, 0, which is kind of good if I'm developing a game, I think, to kind of have everything start at a, at a simple place, I can then take the Z and move it to like 500, half of that. And it, whoops, that's 50, 500. And now the beginning of that track is right there at that zero, zero, zero. I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, I and think then so. Let's, let's also, we learned that we could rename this. If I right click here and choose rename, call that track like that. Uh, this could catch on as a replacement for dog years, <laughs> says uh, Retro CRT, about you know, doing calculations like my avatar is 3.8 Campbell's old or <laughs> 4.8 as uh, it was later corrected. Yeah, we're going to do it in Campbell's. You, you just can't age. No. You've got to slow down your aging is what we have <laughs> to do. So now let's drop down a new uh, item. Actually, you know what? Let's just, let's, before I do that, there's our tracks. So we built this cool track for our racing game, and we learned that if we hit this button, it'll play. And there it is. It's playing. Nothing's really happening because, you know, we don't have anything else we've added. Um, but that's it. The camera is right here. Notice the camera's at minus 10. Interesting, I don't think I did that. I think it put it there by itself. So the camera's back about 10 units, whatever you want to think of these of. And if I were to drop a new control onto this, a new cube, and this could be my player, like Thank this, you. right there. It's still pretty blurry for me. It's still blurry? You're still getting blurry for me? Yeah. You might try, um, You might try, uh, we might try reconnecting the call. Has it changed at all or has it been blurry the whole time? It's been blurry the whole time. Blurry the whole time. All right, let's do this. I just want to try and do a, a tech issue with Campbell here and see if I can reconnect with him. I'm, I'm, let's disconnect and we'll reconnect Kay. the call and see if it's any better. And did you plug in the um, the internet connection off to the side? Yeah, you got that? It's, it's plugged in. The, that, okay. So let's I disconnect and good. reconnect. And you'll have to mute. Oh, Campbell's unavailable. Let's try it. What? Try again. Whoa, okay. Da. Did you 
get it? Yeah, I got, I got it. it. Okay. Mute. Any Good. better? Uh, I can't see your screen right now. I'm glad I'm not the only one that sings along in the Skype ringtone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I always Skype do in 2020. Uh, Sana says, uh, Sana says, hi, Surly, and then says, uh, Skype in 2020, smack my head. Yeah, Sana, I would agree with that. It's, it's like, uh, it's like I'm right next to him, you know, with, uh, uh, an ethernet connection. So we should be able to see it. Are you seeing it now, Campbell? No, I just see your icon. Okay. Give me a second. I sec don't see your screen at all. Let me, give me a second here. Let's, let me try doing this to kind of prompt it and trigger it. Sometimes I have to give it a little nudge. And uh, did that work? No. Okay, let me go one more thing. Let's go switch over to that second machine. Uh, it looks like I'm sharing my... It's. It looks like I'm sharing me. That's weird. I'm sharing my video. You're not seeing it at all, huh? No, not at all. All right, give me a second, kids. I'm going to go down and uh, we're going to go take a look at... Uh, I'm going to take a look at Campbell's machine. Uh, where's my be right back? There it is right there. We'll be right back. Yeah, it's not blurry. All right, and so it looks like we're back, and Campbell says not blurry. My yep. mic is... Everything's okay. Getting plugged in. Give me a second, kids, here. All right, we did that. Uh, okay, cool. I'm glad we did that, because if that ever happens again, Campbell, I think that action of kind of reconnecting can help. And it also seemed that you calling me from your Skype was better than me calling you from mine. Yeah. Right? Or at the very least, just trying a second time. Right? right. So if we see that again, that's how, what we'll do to get out of that. Okay. <laughs> Um, Surly Dev, you use Skype every night for eight to nine hours at a time. I have an old phone by the side of the bed just for Skype. Uh, Mark sends this and that's better. Okay, good. All right, so we've dropped down a cube here. Uh, I'm going to raise it up a little bit more. Let's hit play and see what happens. Now, it you has no rigid body, so it won't fall. Okay, so it's not falling. Nothing's happening. It's in the sky right there. I can't really move this. But I can over here in the scene, I can kind of do it. Let's turn off play for a second. You had this in another window. Oh, yeah. I had it so I could see the game and the... There yeah, like, Yeah, like that. So this is kind of the ability to move around anywhere and look at the game. And this is what the player would see because there's, I think, one camera active yeah. at any time in the game is what I believe. How do I get this to fall, Campbell? What do I do? You add component and then rigid body. Rigid body. So I'm going to say this. I'm going to rename it. Whoops. <laughs> I <laughs> typed in rename. I meant to tell, call that player. Uh, that's funny. All right. There's player. And so over here, I click on add component right there. Yes. And then R. Type in ridge. Uh, yep. Rigid body. Right and there. do this one. And yep. is that all I need to do? Yeah. I'm pretty oh, sure. And that's, I've added it, it to, to the player. So now if we hit play, is it going to fall? Yeah. It should. Nice. Nice. But now it just falls and it stops. And it does that. Then we did something else. We created a script for the first time, right? Yeah, we made a new... We created a C-sharp C -sharp script. script. Uh, in Visual Studio. And we gave it a name. Camera properties. Can I rename this? Where's my rename? Hmm, I don't no, 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 no. You, there's no rename, but if you... It, you should just type something in and it should go there. Oh, can I do yeah, that now? There. So I'm going to call this my player... Okay, cool. Player, player properties. Properties. This is what yeah. Campbell's been calling. He's been adding the word properties at the end, which I kind of like. 
Can I double click this can now? Open it. No, you. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, there. Double clicking opens it up, and then I think we did something like this where we applied a force to it, but we needed. We needed to make a public rigid body. We needed a public rigid body, so we and came we down in it here. And play a rigid body. And uh, and we and we typed in something like um, like uh, public rigid no, body. No, 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 like this public rigid, rigid body. body. And then gave it a name. Like player rigid body, I think. Player rigid body. So I'm going to just get that suggestion and add the word player to the front of it. Player. Like that. Um, yep. Or maybe just call it player. I don't know. I'm going to call it player like this. Okay. So I've done that. Then I go back in Unity and I take this and I drag this onto our player. Yes. Can't add component because the script class cannot be found. Make sure that there are no compile errors and that the file name and class name match. Uh oh. Oh look, it doesn't it doesn't match it. Um, so I'm going to rename Player the file to match the type, like that. Player properties. That didn't work. Uh, then I'm just going to type it in. It, I'm wondering if it's if Unity's got it locked. I'm going to type in player properties like that. Okay, so there's a class. We also learned about the code last time. We learned that a class started with the words public class, and then this was the name, and this was things that the class inherited from. This was the things that were already, the behaviors that already knew. It's kind of like the idea of going to school, right? Where if I've gone to school and I've learned math, then that means I can now, math would maybe be here. So if I'm a person, I would then have that uh -huh. math knowledge and I could yeah. do things like multiplication, addition, that sort of thing. That's what this is. And this word mono behavior, that's probably another class out there uh, somewhere in Unity Engine. And we learned that these characters are important in the source code. This is for starting a block and that's for ending a block. So the class starts here and ends here. And this we learned was a method. Um, one way to identify the methods is the word void in front of them. And the other word, way that we could identify them is the parentheses. Parens right here. And they also use these curly braces here to indicate the start and the end of the code. And there's and nothing. And then they have the dots between what? the dotted line between two parentheses that basically just tell you you're in start or you're in update or yeah, you're in Yeah, it tells you where you are. Properties. Right, exactly. Um, okay, so I've added this. Let's go back and see if we can drag it now, now that I've, I've renamed the file. Can't add it because the script class cannot be found. Huh. Um, I feel like a refresh of this. Let me try closing out of this. Oh, I think it's because you didn't save it once you renamed it. Uh, how do I save it? What, here? Oh, here. Yeah. Maybe? Let's see if that works. Nope. Oh, no, no, no. I... I was saying you didn't save it in uh, Visual Studio. Sorry. I did save it in Visual Studio. I actually you closed did? it in Visual Studio. Let me try double clicking to open it up again. Uh, let's save it again one more time. I think this, so we've seen this, we saw this happen before on, um, on your machine mm -hmm. when we did exactly, or what seemed to yeah. be exactly the same thing, where we dropped something in, we hit enter, and it gave it one name, and then we renamed it here. And it worked. Yeah. Um, let me try one more time, and if it fails, I think I'm going to restart Unity. Let's try re restarting Unity and see if that works. Okay. Um, Do you want to go to my machine? So yeah, let's go to your machine over here now. We'll switch over to you. There's Caleb's oh, machine. Yeah. This is kind of where we left off last time. You can go to kind of continue what we have. Notice in the in the left side there in the hierarchy, we've got Campbell's got four cubes he's dropped down there. It looks like. Yeah. Cube. Tell us about those, Campbell. What's going on uh, with those? These cubes right here are the. Uh, Ah, my mouse stopped working for a second. Uh, these cubes right here, they are um, the the obstacles that we run into. And they, um, as you can see right here, they don't use gravity. So when you knock into them, they float. They start floating away. So they they don't use gravity, but they don't need to fall because you've already put them in kind of the falling position at the start of the, yeah. of the game. They're just stacked. All right, so can we see that? Can we w play the game and watch that? Yeah. I do not like this delay. Did you hit the play button? Yeah, I did. So this is what... 
and then over here it falls off of the track because it uh, hits the block so that sets it off course and it just falls because there's nothing blocking it. Are you, can you double check to make sure you've hit play on that? Is the I, I didn't notice the background change its color. The, the no, it got darker. It did get darker. So you're confident we're about to play. Yep. It seems like it's taken a long time. Yeah. Meanwhile, on my machine, I have uh, rest restarted, uh, I've started up Unity and loaded that new project. So it's loading up on my machine. Okay. Uh, do you want to look at the code a little bit? So um, here we already have the public rigid body. And then we also created a public float. And we named it Forward Force. Um, I can't see that on your screen. Make sure that you're you share, sharing that on, on your screen. And just let me switch over. Give me a second on this, Kim. I'm going to switch back over to my machine here. I've restarted. I want to see if dragging this is going to work now. Nope. No. Player properties because the script class cannot be found. I want to make sure this name is actually matching it. What does it say here? Oh, yeah. It looks correct. Player Wait. properties. Yeah, player properties. properties. Um, all right, well, I'm now at a point where I'm thinking, okay, it's going to be faster to... Uh, delete it and delete make a it. new one. Yeah, Probably. that's kind of what I'm thinking. It looks right to me. The naming looks right. I just copied that to the clipboard, I thought. Hold on. It wasn't layer properties. It was player properties. I've just copied all of that. Is there space at the end, maybe? It keeps coming with layer properties. I don't know why that is the case. I clearly see the P there. Okay. Show an explorer. Yeah, that looks really good to me. Is It looks really good to me. Mm. and I'm, So I'm not sure why that's not working. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to delete it. And make a new one. Yeah, before I delete it, I'm going to copy this line of code right here. That's what I'm going to do. Fine, we'll save that. Get rid of it over here, we're going to say, where's my option to delete? There it is right there. We'll delete it. Cannot undo. And this time we're going to be really careful. When we say create, I'm going to say C Sharp script. And now I'm going to type in player properties. Like this, and I'm going to double check it. Looks good. I'm going to hit enter. Double click on that. Now I'm going to come down here, paste that in. And now I'm going to try to drag it up. And is this going to work? Unity is unresponsive. There we go. Dragging it up. That worked. Kind of interesting. I'm going to huh. click on player now. And now my script is down here. And I think I can drag player right down into this script. Can't I? No, no, no. You have to, uh, you have to paste that line of code in, remember? I have to do what? Paste the line of code in. Oh, you're right. I didn't do that. Where are you? We need your no, I did do it. Oh, yeah. All right. But it's not here. I have. <laughs> That's an Isku 7, kids. <laughs> Can't believe all this. Look, we're just trying to get some work done over here. And there's a whole, like, intergalactic battle going on out there. Um, so I don't get this. I've got public rigid body player. I've got the field right there. We should see it here in the script. I just found something. Did I really not cool save it? I saved it. Unity. What'd you say, Camel? I just found something really cool, cu cool in Unity. Oh, really? Show me something cool. What'd you find, Campbell? Um, uh, this is a separate thing than what I had planned, but um, uh. Can can, oh, you! I'm not sharing my screen. One second. No, you're. I use it. Well, I can see it. I can see your. Uh, I think. Oh, that's my screen. Yeah. Yep, okay. that's you. Uh oh. 
I just realized yeah. we should change our background, our horizon color or something like that. What'd you find? Yeah. That's cool. Look, this right down here. Oh. You can like zoom in on these or make nice. them Nice. That is awesome because I don't like how I can't see everything down here. I'm going to do that on mine. Let's switch back over to mine. That's actually super helpful. Uh, hold on. There's an error at the bottom of the screen I just noticed on my machine. Uh, okay. Here's what I see. Let's kind of zoom in on this here. It's th this huh. is why I'm having the problem. I think it's it's. Uh, let me get in even more on this. It says assets player properties error. The type or namespace name rigid body could not be found. Are you missing a using directive or assembly reference? I think we saw this before when we were setting up on your machine. It wasn't enough to have Unity Engine in here, uh, and we had this problem. And I don't remember how we fixed it. And there you can see it right there in the console. Let me check in the code. I'd love to be able to right click this and copy it, but I don't. Um, let me do a search for this. So sometimes when I see a problem like this, I, I want to do a search. So I'll come in and I'll say something like C sharp and unity. So the search engine knows what I'm looking for. And then I'll say uh, cannot uh, find rigid body like that. I think that's what the error said, something along those lines. Typer namespace name could not be found. I'll say, well, let's see what happens here. Can't get rigid body references set on my script in the editor. Can't find. Typer namespace name rigid body could not be found. So what's the problem? Huh. Oh, it should be rigid body with a lowercase b. It is? That's what it's saying. Is that true? Oh, yeah, it is. All right. Let's try that. Uh, and then let's... Uh, oh, there it is. Yay. It worked. Okay, okay that's then... cool. Now, there's another problem, though, is that I should have had a suggestion. There's no suggestion. We saw this problem as well, I think. I'm going to go back and do one more search here. You know what? I'll do this while you're talking because you probably want to show stuff now. Is that true, Camera? Yeah. Okay. Um, so um, let me, can I give me like one minute to finish this? Yeah. And then you can go. All right. So we're going to drag player onto rigid body like that. And then in our script, what we're going to do in the update method, we're going to say uh, player dot, uh, I think there's an add force. Oh, but I can't do it. I don't have IntelliSense. I need to solve that problem first. All right, Campbell, we're going to switch over to your machine while I look up that Kay. problem. Okay. Um. So again, we had our forward force, our public float, and we set that to three. And what is, tell me about that public float forward force. Um, so we made a public, uh, basically a number. And since it isn't a public int, which is an integer, it doesn't have to be a whole number. It can also be a decimal. Um, but this isn't a decimal, but I... I like to use only floats because then if you ever want to change it to a decimal, you don't have to go into the code oh, and change it that's there. That's kind of an interesting idea. What? Do, um, why do we call that forward force? Because um, this is the force that is pushing us forward. Because um, we had our player rigid body dot add force. So yeah. we're adding a force to the rigid body of oh, the nice. player. Oh, nice. That's what I was looking for right there, that call to add force. But I didn't have IntelliSense in there. So I'm going to say no IntelliSense. Uh, let me switch back just so you can see what I'm typing and then, in here. Oh. I'm saying no IntelliSense in uh, Unity uh, and then C Sharp. That's what I'm uh, typing in up there. Let me move it a little bit so you can see what I've typed in. No IntelliSense in Unity or C Sharp. Um, let's see what we got here. Close Visual Studio and Unity, Edit Preference External Tools. Ah, okay, so let's follow these steps. Here, if you because if you've encountered this same problem, so we're going to take Visual Studio. I'm going to close it down like that, and I have a second instance of it. I think open as well. This is actually my live share with Campbell. I'm going to maybe keep this open because I'd like to be able to see Campbell's code. Yeah, it's also cool because I can like select it and copy it if I want to. And then you can see it on my screen. Yeah. Um, uh, in Unity, go to Edit Preferences, External Tools. So Edit. Preferences, external tools, okay? 
In external tools, go to the part that says external script editor. This should be on whichever Visual Studio editor you're using. For me, it was default to open by file extension. Let's see what it says. Do, do, do. Um, what? The music's gone. Nope, now it's back. External script editor, open by file extension. Okay. Make sure generate all CSP projects is checked. I think it wants all of these. Generate script. For, I think it wants us to do all of these. Bloop, 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 bloop. Open the C sharp script you were trying to open earlier. Okay, regenerate the project files. I'm going to hit that button too, just in case. And now let's see if we can open that file up and get some IntelliSense on it here. IntelliSense? So now I'm going to say player. Yeah. Dot, we're not quite there no. yet. Dot add force. Not working still. I think it's a capital A. Yeah, but I, I'm hitting control space here. I should see something, and I'm not. Why is interesting, your I got two of these. Gone. Oh, this is yours. Oh, interesting. Okay, let's do this. I'm going to close this down, too. I'm going to close down our live share, and okay. we'll re I'll rejoin you a little bit later. Okay. I'm going to say, don't save to yours. No, don't save. And I'm going to go back in one more time. Because we didn't exactly follow those preferences, follow those steps. I'm going to hit regenerate project files, open by file extension. Oh, wait, maybe this was my problem. Wait, what does that say? I can't it read it. It says open by screen. file extension, but I'm going to choose instead Visual Studio 2019. Ah. Uh. Let's see. This should be on whichever Visual Studio editor you're using. For me, it defaulted to, oh, I thought that's what I was supposed to set it to. But what I should set it to is the Visual Studio that I'm using. All right, let's try that. Which is Visual Studio 2019, right? That's the one I have, yeah. Okay, starting up. And let's see if that gives us, solves us the IntelliSense problem. I've got a, uh, okay. So now I'm gonna come down here into update. I'm gonna type in player. Get my finger on the letter P, player. Dot add. Oh, look at that, Yay, Campbell. it's back. That's what I want. Add, add force. force. And uh, I want to create Forward a new vector three. Oh, look at this. Look, it's a cup of tea. <laughs> and a pot of tea over there. <laughs> Last time Matt says, oh, the real host of the show is finally here. There we go. Been waiting all week on Campbell. Thanks, Last Matt. Uh, okay, so we're going to say uh, new vector, and uh, let's just, I'm just going to go a little crazy here. I'm going to say one, one, and one, Ooh. like that. So it's going to kind of go off at a diagonal, Me. I think. Let's see what happens when we run it's the gonna game. It's going to go, yeah, I think, like, not this time. either in that direction, that, yeah, I think it's going to go in it that way. It actually didn't do anything. What? Maybe I'm not adding enough force to it. Maybe it's got too much friction. You were talking to me about telling me about friction. Oh yeah, um, uh, you before. have you have to uh, right click the uh, project folder. No, no, no not there. Uh, where your all of your scripts are. Is Create that a physics material right here. Right there. Oh yeah, cool. I love it. Uh, all right, there's and my then new physics you can, material. Uh, up in the upper right corner. I'm gonna call it slippery, right? Yeah, that's what I did. Slippery. Okay, cool. And then uh, set that friction to zero. And, and then I normally do minimum, but I realize there's a multiply, which I think multiplies the two frictions together, which would be zero, zero. Oh, yes. Which that, is probably less than minimum. That's a brilliant observation. Oh, no, look what I did. I was playing the game while I made those changes. Oh, dang oh, it. But slippery's still there. That's good. Slippery okay, so is now still there. I I'm going to take slippery and drag it onto player. And let's see if that's enough. Please work. Oh, look at that. Nice. It went boo. And then since it had a rigid body, it went back down. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, cool. Uh, so let's change that a little bit. I want to go only in the Z direction. Let's make that like a 10 and make these both zeros. Zero. Uh, like zero. that. And I'll just do one more play on that. Wait a minute. Start it again. And now we're going and shooting down the track. Sweet. That's kind of what you did last time. 
Yeah. A little bit. All right, Caleb. Uh, I think we didn't use a vector three, though. We did transform dot forward times oh. forward force. But that's, it still works, right? That's super cool. So transform is a property of our player because yeah, our player yeah. is a cube. Which I think is, it creates a new vector three and it sets, oh, what? Oh. I think it and is. It I think you're right. It is zero, zero, and then one if yeah. it's forward. But then up uh, does it to zero, one, zero. I, I think, think and yeah. so sorry. No, we you're great. Go go go. We multiplied it by forward force, which was our public float up here. So it, it's multiplied by three. Nice. And it's uh, I think it's automatically transformed forward. Sets it to uh with one force forward. Um, so we just multiplied that times three. And the good thing about this being public is we can change it in the game. Like oh, oopsies. Yeah. Uh, right. Whatever we applied it to, which was, I think, player, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and the, in the script, see forward force. So we can make it go, like, really quickly, or bleh, like 10. Or we can make it go slower, like Right. One. So that's very cool, right? By, by creating that public float and calling it uh. forward force, uh, Unity gives us uh, a, an entry for it in the inspector. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Lassimat says, uh, wow, Campbell really knows his stuff. I guess I know who will make AAA games in the future. Campbell, it's you. I want to make so much money. All from you. Yay. Wait, what are AAA games? Like really good games, the highest ah. quality games, AAA. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. Can we try something, Campbell? Can we go back to the code on your other? Yeah, and can you on line 18... 18? If you move the mouse over to the over the number 18, move it over to the left and a little bit left of that number, I think, even more to the left, just a little bit, a little bit more to the left. A little more to the left, a little more, a little more, almost there. Right there, I'm hoping, I was hoping you there would be something that the mouse would change. Let me the mouse did change. Look, it, it's facing the other way. Oh, maybe I can't see. Hold on a second. Let me switch ah. to my machine a second. And I want to see if, I, and I want to show you what I want That's you to do. That's so cool. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to like right in, uh, where is it? Right here in this, right here. See what I'm doing? I'm yeah. clicking right here. Click there until it turns red, red circle. That's what I want you to do. Let's look on your machine and see if you can do that. Right there in the gutter. Yeah, oh. click there. Yeah. Now, try running the game. I want to see if, that's called a breakpoint. And normally when you what code. What does it do? Is when you run, the program stops when you get to the break point. And what I'm hoping is, is it'll switch over to Visual Studio and we'll be able to take a look at that transform dot forward and see if there's any evidence that you're right. Is it gonna do it? Okay, uh, let's go switch over. Switch over to, oh wait, no, maybe not. It's not actually stopping at the break point. Huh. So that's interesting. I thought we would do that. Maybe there's a debug kind of thing that we need to do. Although, let's try one more thing though. Don't turn it off yet. Go back to Unity, switch to Unity, stop the game. Stop. Okay, now switch back over to Visual Studio. Yeah, Lassimat is suggesting this. I was, I was thinking the same thing. Lassimat suggesting, look, uh, attach to Unity. And if you look up at the top of the Visual Studio, there's a green triangle that looks like a play button. That's normally how you would test and Here? run anyway. It says attached to Unity. Let's click that. And I I'll tell you what I think is going to happen. I think it's going to start up your game attached to Unity so it can talk to it and allow us to stop execution right there at that point. If it does, it's going to be super cool because we're going to be able to find out what, the, what your game is like frozen in time. Right? What, where is the player? Whoa. You could ask that okay, kind of a that's question. that's really cool. Uh, did it, did it, did you hit play or did it no, hit play? No, I, I didn't hit play, I think. Okay. So we'll just Now wait. it's just loading. Let's see what happens. It's importing, I think. I think I'm going to try the same on my machine while we're waiting. Let me know when that kicks in. So I'm going to set a breakpoint right here. I'm going to change this line of code so it looks similar to what Campbell had. I'm going to make a comment. We learned about comments. They look, start with these two lines here. That just means I can just write whatever I want here. And it, it won't affect the code. At yeah, all. so I'm going to say transform.forward times, and I'll just say times uh, five. That's what I'll do. And I've got a breakpoint here. I'm going to click on this, attached to Unity. My machine is a little bit faster than Campbell's. Oh, look at this, and I'm already at the oh, breakpoint. Mine's you loaded. might be at the breakpoint too. Yeah, I'm at the breakpoint. Switch think. over to Visual Studio so we can see it. 
Oh, no, you're oh. not quite. Wait, wait. Visual Studio, stop responding. Um, For 18 seconds. Up at the top, just click the, the, the close on the right over there. Right. Yeah, the yeah. X on the right. Um, you know what I think, Campbell? I think this show is your path to a faster computer. Yeah. That's I see that in your future. When we started this, when we were like, we were like, when we got you this computer, we weren't thinking oh, Campbell gonna was going to need to be. What'd you say? You weren't thinking. Oh, we're going to do a coding show where we're going to need right fast computers. Yeah, exactly. Um, Surly Dev is like, Mom, Mom, I need a new computer. Yeah, we weren't thinking about what we were going to be building. Unity is really hungry, says Lazamet. Yeah, ah, and so oopsies. Campbell's. Uh, yeah. Campbell's computer is like a, a pretty low-level computer. Yeah. It's an entry-level computer. Um, well, let's do it on my machine since w I've got a breakpoint over here. Okay. okay. So on my machine, this is what happens. We're here. And if I come in and I hover over transform forward, look at what, do you see that? What's over there on the side? Let me no. just zoom in a little bit so you can see this. I transform. hover over it. It says transform dot forward. Look at what it says. 0 0.0.0.0.1.0. How does this relate to your theory that you were talking about earlier on what you thought transform dot forward was? I said um, that it, w it automatically set the Z to 1 and all of the other ones to 0. Yeah. So now notice, when we open it up, look, when we open it up, transform dot forward, um, we get something that says normalized is here. We also get, what's interesting is we get an X, Y, and Z properties huh? as well of it. Wait. So wait, I'm not following. What do those do? The magnitude normalized. X, so y, and normalized Z. means I think one way of saying it is we're kind of getting it to a certain number of digits. That's what I'm interpreting this is. So this is only showing two digits. Notice the X. It looks like it's a giant number, doesn't it? Three, yeah, negative but three, it's three point five. Point. What's this E mean? Do you remember? Oh, oh, E is um ten. No, no. no times 10 to the negative 14th. 10 to the negative 14th. Or is that a big number or a small number? That's a small number. That's it's a, an so it's, this teeny is like, number. This is like 14 zeros, and then you see a 3, 5, 1, 4, right? It's zero point, and then 13 or 14 zeros down there till you get to that 3. It's a really small number. Huh. And what about this? That's also a pretty small number. Pretty small number. Six zeros, and then the 1, right? Okay. The Z is flat out one. So the normalized looks like it's just kind of, you know, taking care of any kind of errors in, in, in here. Um, uh, use the drop down on normalized. Wait, wait, wait. E equals exponential. Uh, Surly Dev, I think I'm, I'm just catching up. I think Surly Dev, I've done what Surly Dev was asking to do on that. So forward, we can, what's cool about a breakpoint, Campbell, is we can hover, oh, the mouse, look at this. We can hover over any of the items, look at this, we're hovering over player. the player, any of the objects like player, and then we can now see what's inside player, right? And now we can start to see, if I bring it up here to the top a little bit, like this, we can start to see what's inside player. And there's actually a pretty... Lots of pretty, stuff. Pretty, yeah, there's lots of stuff here, right? We see its rotation, our player's position, right? How, much, how big and heavy we are. Our drag. Our, Oh, we can freeze the, our freeze rotation. Yeah. So things Detect that we can do inside of Unity by setting properties, we can also do inside of code by changing these properties. Mm. Everything here we can, we, just about everything here we can modify. Okay? Yeah. So your theory about forward, right, looks like it's correct. If I change this to say up, maybe, let's see, is up there? Up is there. Yep, up is there. And then there's also, I look, think. Look at when I hover over uh, up. Left or right? Look at it. That's up. See the numbers? Yeah. Zero, and then the Y, One. just like you said, is there. Um, the only thing that's not clear to me, though, is what the type of this is on it. It doesn't say what the type is, but I can drill into this. If I right-click on an entry, and I say, go to definition, <gasps> uh, it won't let me do it. All right, sometimes that won't have that, uh, that's like that. All right, so now that I'm stopped here, I can clear my breakpoint if I don't want to hit it anymore and just hit run. And then uh, back in my game, it should be taken off and running. And it looks like it has. So, uh, so that's on my machine. What's going on in your machine?
Oh, I just also got rid of the break point. Did you ever hit it or did it just seem like that didn't happen? I did hit it. You did hit the break point. Okay. And then it worked. But it just took a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Surly Dev's flying his drone around. Don't Hello. be distracted. He's just collecting coins. He's just collecting his coins. Lassimat says it's a Vector 3. That's what I was expecting to see, but but I didn't see it. So Lassimat looks like Lassimat's done some Unity coding here. Uh, and uh, I totally agree with that. Look at this. Look at all these coins over here. Look at Surly Dev collecting coins. Um, all right, what's next, Camel? What are we going to do next? Um, next, uh, we have the player code working, right? Yeah, I think we do on this. When you hit play, it goes forward. Can yeah. we make it so that when we hit the keys... It moves left and right? Sure. I'd like to do that next. Okay. Ah, uh, right at break point. Okay. Nope. Does it keep coming back? Are you clicking it only yeah, once? Yeah, it keeps coming back. Oh, should I click it twice? Are you running? Oh, look out, Campbell. Coding Gorilla. He's over. He's on the other side. Yeah, he's right over there. Look out. The code's coming right by <laughs> you, man. I think he's helping with some code. Very serious, Coding Gorilla. Codebase Alpha is here as well. Codebase Alpha says, uh, hi, it's Kids Code. Uh, let me close that down. Looks like we're on my machine here. Hold on a second. I'm going to say, hi, Codebase Alpha. Hello. Now's the time when we dance, Campbell. Codebase Alpha. And Surly Deb flying around in space. That looks so awesome, Surly Deb. All right, back over to Campbell's machine. Um, welcome, guys. Glad you're here. Um, Codebase Alpha arrived from hyperspace. Uh, hey, uh, Campbell, okay. how you coding? Asked Codebase Alpha. Good. Good so far. We're doing. We're kind of dipping our our feet into it a little bit. I think that's fair to say. Why is this break point not going away? Um, do this, Campbell. Go. You could. Are you running? Let me ask you. Is the game running right now? Is it? No. Okay, you are attached to Unity. Go back over to Visual Studio. And let me show oh, you. Oh, should I unattach to Unity? Uh oh, all of these are. Uh, up at the top. Notice. Oh. All right, up at the top, back to your machine. Every time somebody awesome. takes every time somebody takes over, it switches to my machine. I'm not sure how we're gonna figure that out to do that. Dance battle. Campbell wins! What? Campbell won the dance battle? I don't know about that. I wanna I wanna recount. Campbell's busting in moves. Oh, Mark, not so much. Seriously? This is the kind of criticism I get when I'm on the dance floor too. All right, kids. Enough. Enough. We'll find it out. We'll do a dance battle next show. We'll see who wins. I'm going to work on my moves. Uh, oh, look at that. You've got to disable. There's, oh. Here's the thing. We are attached to Unity. How do I unattach? To well, Unity? it's under the debug menu. So up in the debug menu. And wait, let me show you how you can tell. Do you remember that green uh, yeah, triangle? Now it's, it's grayed gray. out. And it says continue. You are attached. Go up into the debug menu and let's see if we can detach. So, so go to the debug menu up there. And uh, detach all. Detach all. Also, stop debugging, I think, would work. Now let's try to take, clear that breakpoint if you can. No more breakpoint. Yeah, it worked. I think Campbell's getting a new machine. That's what I think. Or at least there's going to be a new machine right there that you're going to use when we do the show, I think. Um, <laughs> oh, no. Surly Dev says, I need to go to the Campbell Franklin Mangicotti Miller School of Dancing. Yeah, that's the, that's the competing building across the street. I don't like that. That building's taking away all my business. Dance battle in unity, says Janisku7. All right. Um, all right, we want to respond to a key press. Do we know yeah. how to do this? Do we need to look this up? Uh, I think we need to look this up. I kind of remember, but I'm not quite sure. I think it was an if command, and it was like if the 
Key. All right, let's see if we can figure it out here using IntelliSense. So let's type in if first. If. And do a space if. after this right here. If. And um, and then inside here, I think it was the word input. Try typing in the word input. Yeah, I, it was input yeah. dot. Well, that's a good sign. Um, key, look. Uh, any, key, uh, any key down? No, no, let's not do that. Let's do key down, key down, maybe. Try typing in the letter K. Key down. Get key no. down. Get key down. Right there. And we can pass in a key Enter. code or a key name, either one. And uh, so, so... We want space, right? Yeah, type in key code right here. See, like, just like the suggestion is key code in blue right there. Type it in just like that, key code and then a dot. I think that's an, enum code. an enumeration, which is, I, we, t we learned a little bit about that. There it is right there. Key code, now type a dot. Dot? Yeah. Uh, we want... Perfect. Type in like left space. or up or whatever it is. Why space? don't we jump first? Okay, we're going to do a jump. Okay, if the key is down and it's a space bar. Then. Then. Oh, oh let's do this. Let's use rigid, rigid player rigid body dot add force, but use transform dot up. Ah, and then we can multiply it yeah, times. Yeah, we won't have to figure anything out. Just copy the line of code above you and put it down below where you are. Also, there's no semicolon at the end of that if statement. Oh, there isn't? Yeah, if, st if statements aren't done until you say what they're going to do. So there's you're not quite done yet. Does that make sense? That yeah. if is, is not going to work unless you say what you want to do. If All right, so now instead of saying... Uh, Transform forward, we want up. Yeah. And then we might change the forward force to like... To an upward force. Wait, change it to upward force or jump force. Make oh. it the jump force. So undo Control that. Control Z. Control Z. 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 And then use that coders feature that I talked to you about, Alt, which is Alt, left and right arrows plus the shift key Loop. to select shift. only the word forward. Loop. Upward. And then call it jump. Type in jump. Uh, jump force. Now copy the word jump to the clipboard so you don't have to type that in again. I'll shift boom. So really, Dev, give us a Control clip. C. Let me take a look at the clip. Wait. No, no, no. Don't we just... Inside here... Here's the clip. I think it was the word input. Try typing in the word input. Yeah, it, it was input yeah. dot... Oh, that's a good sign. Um, key, look... Uh, All right. And then in <laughs> that's the clip of us. You have to stop and smell the flowers. That's what he was talking about on the show. All right, cool. Yeah, Surly, you can build flowers anytime you Control want to on C. here. I know you may be like trying to hold back a bit. You don't have to hold back. Um, all right, jump force. And then now, alt shift. Oh, look. Wait, wait, wait. Instead of copying this, use that code rush feature I told, showed you. Oh, we can Duplicate just, line. So which was shift, shift enter. Shift enter. Forward and now force. use alt left and right arrows to select just the jump, just the word forward. There I, you go. I copied. Oh, you copied the whole thing. To the and now let me show you one more thing. See the orange right there on the um, around the word jump force. Yeah. If you put your carrot back inside there. Oh, now and then click hit, enter. Yeah, enter will take you outside quickly. Just a quick way to get outside. So now you've got jump force. So now save it and let's go specify our jump force, and and run and see if we can actually jump in the game. Uh, I think it needs to be high, so like... Okay, you want to make it a bigger 60. number? Yeah. Well, you can set it. Don't forget, you can set it in the script. Oh, yeah, that's true. Or in the game. Oh, these flowers are just so beautiful. So many. It's like a garden. Kubi Self is asking, is this the uh, youngest code, code Rush user? Maybe. Maybe. And kids, if you're watching this uh, on the video on demand and you're wondering what's going on, Surly Dev is just controlling the... Uh, oh, oopsies. He's controlling the Code Rush logo there, flying it around by sending in commands into Ooh. the chat room. <laughs> now Code Rush is coming in for a landing. He hid it in the flowers. All right, so scroll the player properties up a little bit so we can see them um, over here. Because they're right behind the planet. Oh, okay. Scroll that script right up. Down. There you go. Wait, why don't we see the jump force? Did we just save? Maybe we didn't save. Oh, I don't think we saved. Or I don't think I saved. Nope. 
Did you save it? I'm trying. Control S. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Now it's importing in here. Now. I want to see Jump Force over here. I don't see it. Can we go back one more time and look at the code? That looks really good to me. Uh, I don't understand why that's not, we're, we're not seeing that. I think it's that. just taking a little to load. You think there's a delay in it? I'm not sure. Let's oh, yep, it should be back now. Click in on player. player. I was just thinking, click away from player and click back to kind of get it to refresh itself. Ugh, no. There it is, I think I saw player. it. Yep, jump force. Now you can, I think you can take player properties and drag it up above rigid body so it's up near the top so we can see it. Can we drag it up right up there? Yeah, right up in the between. Look at, do you yeah, see the I'm line? Trying. Grab the title. There it is. There it is. There it is. And it looks like it's kind of like you're letting go of the mouse a little bit. It, I see for a moment it's there. Try one more time. Oh. No. Click it. See, there's a drop point. Keep going up. Wait, no, no, no. That was for the rigid body. You're I'm holding the mouse down here. as you're dragging. Yes. And then when you see the gr the blue line, that means you can let go of the mouse. Let go when you the blue li line no, is there. It's like, yes. Th now let go. It didn't move it? This is so... Try moving a little higher, like above the block box collider. Are you using the mouse or the key, uh, the the trackpad to do this? The mouse. Really? Yes. Yes. It <laughs> okay, we did it. We did it. That's gonna be that's gonna be the previously on. And uh, that's the end of the show, folks. There we go. We Goodbye. did it. That's it, everybody. Go home. Um, all right, they're already home. We got to keep going. Uh, all right, so there's a jump force 16. Yeah. So let's try and run the game. Let's see if it's a good jump force. You're going to hit that. Yep, I played. You're going to hit play after it starts, right? I mean, you're going to hit the space. Space bar, yeah. Tell us when you hit the space so we know. I just hit it. Hit it now. Uh-oh. Looks like we're leaving. But it looks like you can jump at any time. Yes, you can. It's just uh, we haven't... Wait a minute. All Something's right, I'm wrong. I'm going to try that on my machine. I'm going to go over to my machine and do the same thing. Is that okay? Yep. I want to play. I want to do it over here. So you've got the player. Uh, oh, I'm running my game here. Let's turn off the game. Uh, we're going to now go back over to the code. <gasps> so I'm going to double click this. And uh, this is my update right here. And I'm going to say, hey, if input, <coughs> get key down. Key code dot uh, space is what you did. You use space. Then I'm going to do player dot add force. Uh, transform up. And this one I'm not going to do here. Maybe I'll just do this one be transform dot forward. Like that. And I'm going to say transform up times five. Like that. And now let's run my game and see what happens. I just want to see if the um, if the if the smoothness of it is, f if it looks better here. It probably on will. Mine. Um, and if it does, another argument for, oh, you know what? Okay, so I'm hitting it. I'm hitting space. And nothing seems to be happening. Also, it's not, I'm not entirely sure nothing's happening because the camera's not following it. We need the camera to follow it. That was something else. Which is another script. If you go to my screen, I already have it up. Okay, let me, uh, let's create a new script. And we'll call this the uh, camera follow. Camera follow. I think I got three L's in there. Okay, camera follow script. There it is right there. Uh, we want to connect. Um, we want to create a, uh, a public uh, property called of type transform. There it is. And we're going to call this the player. Like that. And um, 
And then I want to have a, not the update method, but the fixed update. Remember, we the difference between the two of those is the fixed update was called for physics Yeah, calculations. it's called like multiple times per frame. And what I'm going to do in here is is my camera uh, is going to have a property I think called transform and dot position. I'm going to say that's equal to a new vector three. And I'm going to need the three coordinates, x, y, and z. The x and y, the cam the x and y camera will stay the same. So I'm just going to go into my existing transform of the camera, position.x, and that's my x. Then I'm going to go into transform.position.y, that's my y of the camera, however high up it is. And then I'm going to grab my player, uh, transform.position.z. So the player is going to determine where the camera is, where, on the z-axis. That's what's going to happen there. Um, Wait a minute, something weird just happened. Yeah, let's see what's happened. What's going on in your machine? Uh, so I was running the game. One second. And then the block. I think I was jumping when I hit it, but I at least the camera went flying backwards. Oh, the camera seemed to detach. Or no, no, no. no I don't think it detached. A, does the camera have a rigid body? On it? No, I don't think so. Remember we saw it. Let's go click on camera. What does it have? Yep, no rigid body. Okay, good. It has a transform camera, audio listener. Huh. All right. I'm not sure why that's going on. Back on over here at my machine. Uh, we've dropped the camera down. We've, 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 we've dropped. We're going to drop the camera script onto the main camera. And then when we select the main camera, there's our camera script right over here. We're going to grab our player and drag it on over here. And now when we say play, the camera should follow it. Uh, I think it's following it. It's, but it's right there. Yeah, it's right there. Because uh, we forgot. Or I, think I think we need to move back a little bit. Plus 10? Yep. Is it plus 10 or minus 10? Maybe it's minus. Uh, minus 10. No. Oh it's wait, plus let's 10. check. We can check in Unity, right? It's plus 10. We click here. My player position, the Z is about 7. I'm pretty sure it's and plus 10. And the camera position oh, is at no, negative no. 10. That's about 17 away. Let's actually bring this up higher. Bring up the camera higher. And let's make it a little closer. Let's make it at about 0. Okay. So now we're only back by about 7. So now let's we're going to subtract 7 from this. Okay. And then back over here, let's play the game and see if this works now. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Looks like it, it's working. It works better than mine. There's a little s slip that's happening here. Yeah, it seems smoother, doesn't it? How are we going to solve that problem? No, 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 but my Whoa! code isn't really working. Your code isn't working is what you're saying. I think. Let's go take a look at that. All right, let's stop the game. Let's come back over to your machine. Tell me what's happening here. What's um, this the code for? This is for the camera. Yeah. Oh, it's not right in the middle where it says player position dot y. It should be player posi player position dot position. Um, so it's really position. Yeah. If you hit control space right now, is that right? Control space. space. I think it will fill in the rest of it for you if it knows it. Yeah. Dot y. That should work. That 1.5 might need an F at the end of it. Oh, it does. F. Yep. All right. Save okay. that and try that. Control S. So you're going to always be, what's cool about what you just did, Campbell, is your camera is always going to be 1.5 units above your cube, even if you fall. Whereas when my cube falls, it goes right down, drops away. I'm actually kind of excited to build a new machine, man. Are you are you excited about that? Yeah. All right. Are well, we playing? Well, looks like it was too high. Oh, here we go, though. But it needs to be further back. Yeah. So we can see it. I subtracted about seven from mine. Why don't you try that? Oh, yeah. Mine's... Whoa, why is mine You're only seven. Yeah. Change that to seven. seven. So do you know what order of magnitude means, Campbell? No. It essentially means multiply times the base that you're in. So you're in base 10 when we talk about the yeah. numbers. So an order of magnitude means multiple. Another way of thinking of it, going from the small digit to the next biggest digit. 
is kind of a way of doing oh, it. Oh, like 7 to 70 or 7 to point 0.7. Yeah, point exactly. That's what order of magnitude is. If Still you're in base working. 10. I think. But whatever base you're in, it's always about oh, moving to the next to digit up. Yeah. Lassimat says something interesting. Lassimat says uh, you can just drag the main camera onto the player and it moves with the player without a script unless you have a special reason to make a script for it. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that. You're saying I can... I, I did. Uh, it's basically... parent. I think it's called parenting the camera to the player. Oh. But what happens if we do that is then um, when we hit the blocks... Yeah. Um, it will, the camera will like rotate around the block. And oh, then can we try that though? Can we drag the, or do you want me to do it on my machine? Let me do it on my sure. machine, Campbell. Is that okay? Because yeah, I'll get a little fine. faster response here. I mean, we're going to do it like this, right? I so think it's, is it camera to player? Yeah, it's camera like to that. player. Like that. So now cam player, camera is part of player. I love it. So now that means my code that I've got over here, we can just get rid of that. We can comment out that code and now... I need to create something for it to smash into. So let's do that real quickly. Just make a block. Create a cube. Uh, we're going to put it way up here. I'm going to scale it up uh, like uh, maybe three, 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 like that. Woohoo! That's and, a And uh, let's a put the cube. X at zero. Zero. And I need to give it a rigid body so it smashes into it, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to set add component. I actually, I think it works without a rigid body because it has box collider. It has a box collider. No, but I think what happens is, oh, yeah, no, you're right. It'll the smash player into has it and won't body. move. I kind of wanted to get a little bit of movement here. Okay. Uh, also, it's so much bigger, it probably won't move much. I'm going to give it a mass of like uh, 27, like that. And what else did I want to do? I want to rotate it uh, just a little bit. I want to rotate this thing. Uh, like that, so we get a real interesting collision. And let's play. Oh wait, it's it's, it's yeah, it will fall. Wait, oh yeah, there's, the that's what you're leave? talking about. Yeah. The camera suddenly moves. Now, what if though? I think I saw somewhere in here where in the oh we can freeze rotation of the camera. No, uh, oh, yeah, no. I was thinking that, but I don't know if I see that here. I think that the I saw that in the cube, like in the player. I for think example, it was in rigid body. Was it there? Constraints. Yeah, freeze position right there. So. Yeah, the player's rotating right, last Matt. The, the camera doesn't move relative to the player, but relative to the track it does. And so if we want the camera always facing down the track, then, then we, we would use the code. the code, I think is what we would do. C Films is out there saying hello. Hey, C Films, welcome. How are you doing? Hello. Uh, all right. What's next, Campbell? Back to your machine? Sure. We are going to, let's figure out if we can see the jump working. I think I'd like to do that. And my jump, did my did we do jump on my machine? We haven't done that no, yet. No, I don't think so. It wasn't working, I'm not sure. Maybe we did. Did you get it working on yours? Yeah, I think I did, I'm pretty sure. Okay, can you show it right now? Yeah, Let's I'm take playing. a look at that. Oh. So jump. It's not jumping that much though. Hold the key down. Look at that, that's sweet. <laughs> If you hold the key down, right, because we're not checking, it just keeps going up, right? Hold the key down now. No, because it's when the key press is down. Now it's not working. It's not working at all, it seems. Well, oh, wait, you know what? It's adding a force in the up direction, but is the up changing because it's spinning? Uh, I don't know. No, I think it's always up. I don't know. Uh, C Films is doing great. How are you? How are we doing, Campbell? Are we okay? We're pretty good. We're pretty good. All right. Um... <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go work on get jump working on my machine here. See if we can get that working. Switching back over to my machine, um, and there's my fix update. Looks like I don't have that, so I'm going to say um, we're going to do this. I'm going to undo this. Take my main camera, put it back out over here, so it's no longer parented by it. Uh, and I'm going to say if uh, input is this where I want to do it? No, it's not here. Not on the camera. It's on player properties. Oh, I did have it. If it, the key da is down, get key down, then we want to do this. So here's the thing, though. We learned uh, well, that we want to actually work with two methods here. One called fixed update. This is for physics, for physics updates, the physics engine updates. And the physics engine updates. Um, 
Multiple these are happening about frame. about a hundred a second, maybe, like that. And this is for uh, the screen drawing updates, the screen rendering updates. Rendering means drawing, right? Uh, yeah. And those are about 30 times a second. So we have two of these. I don't want to have the same code in both, but I want to apply forces here. Apply forces here. And I want to, over here, I want to say, um, check for input here, okay? So here's where I want to check to see if the get key is down, right? And then yeah. if that happens, right? I'm going to create a variable no, here. No, in void fixed update, right? Need to jump. What would you say? In void fixed update, right? Because yes. we want it to check multiple times per frame. So we want it to have a faster response. Yeah, so my code here is going to look like this. Look, if input, the key is down in the space, I'm going to set need to jump to true. Then down here, notice I've got this if statement, right? We talked about if statements. Yeah, and then you can say... Oh, we got camel right up above you. It's a bunch of pudding. It's just, it's just ah! a, oh, 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 man. Pudding says, and Hello, this section pudding. is definitely not sponsored by the best dessert in town. Um, C Film says he likes films, and C Films is a movie enthusiast, and is also asking, are we working in Unity? Yeah, we are. We are working in Unity and C Sharp, and Unity we're learning and both, yeah, is what we're doing. We're learning how to be AAA game developers, right? Um, uh, so how are we doing today, Pudding is asking. Good. Yeah, I think we're good. Uh, retro, we've been, we're working on the jump. Yeah, working on jump over here on my machine. Uh, Retro CRT says, always leave room for pudding. Always leave room for pudding. It's an important, important rule. Last Matt nice. says, thanks for the pudding. All right. So I'm going to set a variable here. A variable is like a box. It's like a container. In fact, let me draw a picture of a box. Let's see if I can do this. I'm going to create a, uh, a picture of a box so that we can think about what variables are like. I wonder if I have, oh, actually, you know what? I can just do a search for a picture of a box. Let's do something like that. Uh, a shipping box or box illustration, something like that. Yeah, I want something like this. That's what I want, like that. Hold on, let's come back over here. I'm just gonna copy this image. It compiles. Let's ship it. I'm going to paste it here. It compiles. Let's ship it. I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to crop it. I'm going to just get this one right here. Well, Got that's weird. Nice picture of a box here. Like that. What's wrong with this? And I'm going to copy that. And then uh, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to just talk about variables for a second. And. Uh, uh, Variables are like a box or a container or a container. They hold whatever values you put in them. They hold whatever you put within them. That's a variable. And they can have really cool names. <laughs> You can name your boxes. Like this one. Need to jump. So that's a variable. It's, uh, and also, um, variables can also be of different types. Types. Right? So I can, it's like boxes of different shapes, right? I've got a shoe box for holding shoes and a hat box for holding hats. Right, and they're different shapes because shoes are different shapes from yeah. hats. Right, and so the boxes so you put different. If you put a, a shoe and a hat in a hat box, it won't work. Yeah, it kind of won't work. In some cases, it won't work. In some cases, it, it can, depending on the size of the box. Yeah, the size of the box and what it can really hold. But variables can also be of different types, and that's kind of like having a different shape box. So, so uh, 
the variable above is a bool. Is a bool, which means true or false. True or false. Or aren't there some other bools that are like? Uh, There's something called an enum. This is what an enum looks like. Chocolate. Oh, so Where you I can put multiple of them. Give it multiple choices. Chocolate. Right. Vanilla. What's your favorite ice cream, Campbell? Pistachio. Pistachio. I can't spell pistachio. Pistachio. Is that it? I think like so. Like that. And so that is what an enum looks like. And a bool is a lot like an enum with just two values, true or false. Okay, so it you can say if chocolate, or you can set it. Can you do like a random? Yeah, you can do random. You can do things like that. Put, uh, do you prefer video games or board games more? As C Film is asking. Um, board games. What'd you say? Board games. Campbell likes board games more, but we're doing something that looks like a video game in this, in 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 these getting started episodes. But we could maybe change to two D later and do something that's a board game if you want. I'm, Why not? I'm all over the place. There's that. What's that game you really like playing? The 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 kids like to play that card game. Where you're like kind of you turn your card over werewolf. Do you know the one I'm oh, talking about? Oh, uh, one night ultimate werewolf. One night ultimate werewolf, right? You can make that as like kind of a a, a board game maybe. Um, holy cow! Pudding's favorite is rum raisin, but with just a little rum. Don't do alcohol, kids. That's right. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for that public surface message. So that's an enum. An enum looks like that where we can give it different like flavors or different kinds of just words of words inside of them, right? They're all just words, right? But what what what's cool about Could you this, do it with numbers? Uh no, not really. I can't really do numbers here, but I could I could do this though. Make floats and I then... could say chocolate is equal to one and vanilla is equal to two. Strawberry is equal to maybe four, and pistachio is equal to eight. So yeah. I could do that and now give those meanings and codes and then use those to store information. Like if I get a number, I could turn it into a flavor. And if I have a flavor, I can get, turn it into a number if I want. to. So you to. could write a code to choose your ice cream flavor for you. You could. Absolutely. In fact, maybe we should put this in the game where when you reach the end of the race, there's text that tells you what flavor of ice cream you've won. Yes, no, what do you think? I say why not? Why I say why not? All right, we'll play in that space. All right, so we've got our different flavors here. I don't actually need numbers here for these. I'm just gonna deal with them without the yeah. numbers on it for now. But we'll do something that kind of creates this. Oh, um, could you also, um, could you do uh, different like floats or uh, public floats for them? Or I don't think floats? so. I think these are only integer values here and here. But Oh, could you do it with an integer then? Uh, yeah. But then um, I'm saying, uh, could you make a separate variable that is an integer and then name it something and then give it a value like two and then put it in the enum? Uh, I, let's see if we can do that. I think you, the answer is yes. So I'm going to have a variable called uh, my uh, secret number. And we're going to set that equal to two. And then the question is, can we do this? And the answer is yes. Oh, wait, it's no. It's, it says an object reference is required. Oh, because it's not in the same piece. Let's, I, can, I think I can do a couple changes to this. If I make this static, meaning it's always going to be there, uh, I'll explain static in a minute. But if I do that, I think the answer is going to be yes this time. Is it? No, it's still no. It's got to be a constant. Oh, this is a variable. So we're going to make this uh, read only like that. And now is it going to work? Must be a constant. I think I'm mixing up my programming languages here. Try that. Constant. Constants are by default static. Now is it going to work? Now is it going to work? I just need the word constant up here. The reason why is because this could change. And we whatever we set here has always got to be a number that stays the same. So the answer is yes if you do it like this. You have to put the word constant in front of it. Sorry. Um, I should have stopped you earlier. But my question was... Do you think that we can... Um... Look out, Campbell. Ah! Think we could what? Uh, do you think we could put it like my secret number instead of pistachio or my secret number instead of vanilla? No, no. we cannot do that. Okay. Because my secret number is a number now 
and we want to, so it sounds like you want a list of things we can we can do that um but i kind of want to the answer is yes we can do it but we won't use an enum and i'll show you how to do that later when we want to it's time to actually keep track of lists no of it's okay i just wanted to know if we could we it's can like we totally can um c film says uh, i like whipped cream more than ice cream good for you c films Everybody's got to have a preference. Uh, all right, so let's get rid of all this for ah. now. I got my knee to jump is set to true, but look, it's grayed out up here. See that right why? there? It, if I hover over it, it might tell us why. It says, it says, well, the private member can be removed as the value is assigned. The value assigned to it is never read. Nobody's ever reading that. Okay. Oh, we're never using it? Nobody's ever reading it. In fact, if I use CodeRush's tab to next reference, it's only going to two locations. I need another if statement down in here. Uh-huh. And I need to replace this with this. Now, if I do just this, can you get a sense of what's going to happen in the code? Is it going to work? Will I have a problem? Need. Right here. Oh, sorry. It should work. All right, let's give it a try and see what happens. So coming back over here, we're going to run. I hit the space bar. I'm not jumping at all. Why am I not jumping? Whoops. Um... Can put key me down. This is in my player properties. Need to jump is true. Let's make sure we're setting. Um, I'm going to uh, do a console log right here. A debug log, I think is what. I think I need to debug dot log. And I'm going to say I'm just going to just going to say need to jump like this. Just to make sure we're hitting this line of code. Because maybe get key down is not coming in. We'll see. Let's come back over here. Let's run it. And let's look at the console right here. Yeah, nothing's coming in. So does that mean I've lost that? Does player... Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It, it's here, player properties. No, because we're not even seeing this. So input get key down is not coming, returning true on the space. Let's make sure we're seeing update get called. I'm going to just copy the debug log. And debug log, if you weren't here with us last time, it just sends a message out to the console. Let's hit play now and see if we see anything coming out here. Oh, it is. Sweet. Okay, so now we know we're getting here, but we're never getting here. If we never get here, that means this expression is never, ever true. I'm hitting space. I don't see anything changing over here. All right, let's stop this. So why is get key down? Do you have the same code, by the way, Campbell? Input get key down? Yeah. Gets true during the frame. The user starts pressing the, down the key identified by the key code return parameter. Um, one more time, I'll try it. Did I hit play? Oh no, now it's working. It says need to jump. Okay, interesting. It wasn't working before and it was, and now it is. It's like we needed to make some changes. So need to jump is true. Now in fixed update, adding force, if need to jump, I'm not seeing it actually jump. So what's going on here? I guess we'll come in and uh, let's make it 500. See what happens. Run that. Oh, that worked. Uh, okay, and it's gone. Why does it never come down? Because we never tell it stop. And then after we have to say, 
Right, I need to come in here. I'm going to just say add to block delimiters here. And now I want to set need to jump to false right there. That's what I'm going to do. So my if statement can have can be in two forms. It can be in a form that looks like this, where I just have a single child statement indented underneath it. It's a lot like over here when we drag the camera into player and made it a child of the player. It's a lot like that. And it's the same kind of thing here, a statement right along here. Uh, oh, Campbell's audio is gone. Oh, Campbell. Hello? Yeah. Thanks so much, uh, Lassa Matt. Uh, that was uh, the button over here. He had been accidentally muted. Um, okay. So it can look like this, Campbell, but it can also look like this where we use braces. The difference is, is that if I have more than one child, I need to hold them in something, right? So I'll use these braces right in here to, to hold them together. Whereas up here, I don't need them because it's only one child. Does that make sense? It's yeah. kind of like if you had one baby, you could carry it in your arms, but if you've got you know, a bunch of babies, you need to stick them in a stroller or, or something like that, a playpen. And it's that kind of idea. If I have two or more, I need to hold them in braces. So that's what's happening there. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna set knee jump to false. Let's see what happens with my 500, if that's gonna go crazy. So save that and hit play. Let's see if I can jump over this. Jump, that's a 500. Jump, ah, nice. I won the game, Campbell. That's kind of fun. Um, now, look what's happening though. You can see it over here in this view. hitting it and it's not jumping anymore that's weird it wasn't working for me it's like either. jumping it's like is it if it gets off of the track almost it seems to stop stop jumping i'm not sure maybe because it's out of the camera i don't know let's try one more time um let's do one other thing when we follow the camera let's try doing this let's say that our y position let's say it's equal to the player's Y position. Let's do the average. I'm gonna create a new variable here uh, called, um, I'll make it a type float, um, called average Y. And uh, you know how to do averages, Campbell? No. Oh yeah, you just How do I do take calculate all of an them, average? Add them together and then. And then what? Divide by however many you put it. So I got two, that's gonna be the average right there. That's my player position Y and my transform position Y. I'm gonna take the average of the two positions and put it out there. <laughs> wait, put it oh, wait. where? That is a bit of a problem, hold on. I wanna do something different than this. I don't wanna use my Y position. I wanna say, uh, I wanna create a new variable called camera Y. Uh, like so that. that you're, mm, mm. And I'm going to create a new float for that up here. So I'll type in VF for variable type float. And, um, and let's make that public. And now let's save it, come back over here. So now I'm going to use that camera Y position and add up and the average between where I set the camera the Y and the player. So we should see the camera move a little bit, is what we should see. Uh, choose the main camera. Camera Y, we're gonna say that's equal to three. Okay, which is the current Y right there. Uh, maybe make it, actually, let's make it, let's make it five. All right, let's play the game and see what happens when we jump. So now the camera moves a little bit. Whoa! Ah, all right, I didn't win that game. Let's try again. So jump. Now I'm gonna jump again. Look what's happening. Cause you, you can just jump forever. I can jump while I'm in the air. Now what's really cool about Unity is look over here. See the Y? Watch when I jump, what happens to that? It gets bigger. And look when it, when it, when it, when I'm landed, it's right there at three. So we might want to make it if y is less than three, then or is greater than three. Then what? Don't jump. Okay, cool. So there's another if statement for us. So or uh, then need to jump is false. 
So here's the space, it's here. But what we can do is we can make us that child statement another if statement. So we can come down here and we can say, hey, if our, the transform for the player dot uh, position dot y yeah. is, what did you say, Campbell? You want to do here, if it's greater than three or less than three, what do you want to do? If it's greater, if what uh, is greater than three. If it's greater than three? Or what is its position when it drops? When it's on the ground. It's at three. It is? Yeah, when it's landed, it says it's pretty solidly at three. Okay, then I would say um, if it's greater than 3.5, just to give it a little space. So if it's greater than 3.5? Yes. Then we're going to say need to jump is true? False. Oh. Well, right? since, yeah, so that's a false. So what we really want to do then is change it and say if it's less than 3.5, then we could say jump. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. What I'm saying, um, I'm going to change it to 3.1. Okay. I think it's possible to get, you know, a couple bumps in here, maybe, so I could do a double jump without if I really was slamming on the keyboard. Well, you know what? Let's 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 check it. We'll go with the 3.5. All right. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, let's see if we can now double jump. If we have the ability to jump in the air, or if we've lost that. There we go. Oh yeah, you're right. There is a little space. I'm not sure. Is there one two? Oh yeah, see that double? I got the double in there. You can maybe even do a triple. Uh, hard to say about that. I think that was just a double. Okay. <laughs> All right, that was kind of cool. Uh, let's try making it 3.1 and see if I can get a double jump in that. I don't know. Yep, even 3.1. Um, what um, if there's another way to do it? What if we did this? What if we recorded the time of the jump and we 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 made sure that we couldn't jump again if it, we tried to jump really close in time? Um, oh, so how did we do that in the... No. Surly Dev is asking, uh, may I suggest making the variable a different name? Like can jump. Okay, we could do that. Uh, Lassamet says uh, can certainly suggest uh, is equal to false. Surly Dev says can certainly time out Lassamet is equal to true. <laughs> so uh, that's because Surly is a mod and uh, Lassamet's not a mod yet, but stick with us, Lassamet. You'll be a mod one day. Um, sure, let's rename it. To rename it, um, uh, you can uh, hit control dot and then choose rename and then we're just going to use the alt left and right shift to select just the need to part and call it can jump like that and now we have like a nice variable name a nice variable name thanks to surly dev um, cool um, Cool, cool, cool. All right, so we got can jump is true. I guess what I was thinking is we could store the time. Now, I remember seeing something about time. I think time there's a class called dot, time. Dot, yeah, there is. No, I think it's with a lowercase. No, it's look, look, I, I've got IntelliSense suggestions here. Oh. The time at the beginning of this frame. This is the time in seconds since the start of the game. So what I can do is this. We can oh, do this check start. first to make sure we're level, right? We can do this. But and then, then, then we can do this. Well, let's put some braces down here, and let's let's say let's do this. Let's say last jump time equals, and Campbell, we can do this. We can hit Control Data here, and declare that as a field. Ooh. And then this is asking where I want to put it. I'll just put it there. There. And so now I've got my last jump time, and notice Ooh. it figured out it was a float automatically. So it figured out the type. How? How? Because see, time right here is of type of float, and it's able. The tooling um, is able to figure out the types of the things that are there. Yeah. So now you don't have to think about it anymore. Now we've got the last jump time, and we can do one more thing. We can say uh, we can do this. We can say if we type in the word and here, and we have code rush, it'll replace it to this ampersand, which means a logical boolean and. 
Okay? Yeah. So it means both conditions have to be true to get down to here. So the second condition I want to check is I want to see if time dot time minus oh, the last jump time is greater than and what is what is this in? This is the time in seconds. So I'm going to say this is if it's more than a tenth of a second, maybe maybe a fifth of a second. If the t current time minus the last time we jumped, right, is more than that, and I'm going to set this to zero when we start, just to be very clear. No, I would make it smaller. All right, I'll make it negative two. So we got a guaranteed first jump no matter what. Okay. This is in seconds. Also, this is also I find this really useful, Campbell, in my variable names. Do something like this. Say what the unit is at the end, like seconds, like that. Yeah, Last it's jump time highlighted in, in green, so I couldn't read it. Okay. How's that, though? Last jump time in second. Yep. Good. So if that's the case, then we can now jump, and, and we don't worry about applying forces because we're not doing that in update. And we're going to come down here, and we're going to do this. And to keep us from always, always doing this, we're going to say can jump is false. So that's a little bit about the if statement, right? I can have children of the if statement. I can, if I have one child, I can, don't need these braces. But if I want to add the braces, I can. In other words, this code is the same as the code I had before. Do you see that, Campbell? Yeah. I can take these out or I can come in and add them either way, like that. Okay. But I cannot take them out if I have two children inside, two child statements. Do you want to add color now to the game? Yeah, let's do it. I'll oh. switch over to you. Show oh, us how so to add color. Uh, well, oh, I don't know why I already had a material here, but if you do create yeah, and then down, no, it's actually up here. If you click material. Yeah, right there. Well, and then this will show up in the inspector and you can click what it should be white at the beginning. Okay. So that's a color And you choice. can change the color to like red. Oh, wait. And then, this is, right now, it's just a material. It's not, I, I'm not seeing like the player or the track yeah, change. because we haven't uh, dragged it onto anything yet. Got it. So, let's do it. Like that. And then. It's really that was slowly dr sliding the Code Rush logo across the screen and planting flowers. Just dropping seeds right there from it. Okay. And then if we take this and we drag it let's do it to the track oh nice we i actually like that color in the game yeah that's super cool and then we can also up here we can make it like more metallic or smooth all right i like it and then uh since we already have this material here. it looks like it's got actually a lot more options than the ones we're changing oh yeah well, that's kind of interesting. What's rendering mode? What are the what are, what are the the drop down rendering rendering mode up there? What's that? It says opaque. Oh, 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 yeah. We can make it transparent, transparent as well. Really, although I'm not really seeing. I can't really see a difference. Oh no, wait. It didn't change. Oh, now it's changed. Okay, I see a difference on the in the left, but on the right, it doesn't really look different to me. No. I think it's because here we can't see the uh, There's nothing. The yeah, grid. And we can't see the grid. Okay, I see. So you're probably right. That means if we move the camera down over here, we might be able to see through it into the horizon, maybe. Ooh, that's true. Do you All want right. to try? No, if you want to, sure. Just grab the... the uh, yeah, drag it down. No, I can't really see through it, I think. Oh, I think it's because there's no light. Maybe because it's so thick. I don't know. All right. Uh, okay, wait. Uh, let's switch it back to opaque. And um, right. what else do you want to do? Let's drag the red to the player. Nice. Oh, wait. Uh, something that I like to do is take the directional light and then see these colors are kind of dark. Yeah. Uh, where is it? Intensity is somewhere. It's like it's right up above under real time. It's up above where you are now. Up above a little higher, a little more. There it is, uh -huh, right there. Intensity, and then you can make this like ah no no not that bright, but like two. Oh, I see. That's kind of cool. I like it. Or one point six even works. 
Oh, yeah, no, that's really cool. I like it. Can you also move that light source around quick? You've got it selected. Where is it? Can you double click on it over there so we can see where the light source is? Yeah. And look, can we try playing rotating? Hit the rotate tool in the upper left. Which I want to see, rotate, rotate the light and just see what happens. See what kind of looks, different looks we can achieve. And see, find one that you like. That looks kind of cool, right there. You can also hold down in the value and move the mouse right to increase the value and left to decrease if you want to, to real time change them. Mm -hmm. So I think he's talking about the word, like on the word intensity, you can click and drag left and right on it. Is that true? Oh, yeah. And then uh, here. Right there. There we go. Nice. Nice suggestion. Thanks, Les Matt. Suggestion. Okay, I like that. All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, and what's next? We've got coloring. We've got color. Do you want to add color to the obstacles? Yeah. Let's get only, I only want to have one obstacle though. I want to take the, okay. with that cube and I want to, instead of dropping them, I want to drop them programmatically. Oh, like uh, so that they drop in random positions? Kind of. I actually want to drop them in a stack. So what Always. I want you to do is I want you to delete, save your work, but let's delete, let's, Wait, you know what, you let's, let's, let's don't worry about it. Let's, let's put a whole new cube on here and this will be the, what we'll use. So drop a new cube on or maybe a sphere. Does that make sense? Maybe a sphere. For what? Obstacles? Yeah, actually I'm gonna go back to, I'm gonna say, let's go back to a cube because I'm worried about okay. the performance on your machine right now. When you get the next, your next machine for doing this. We can do it. Yeah, let's drop a cube because I think it's gonna be simpler on the physics right. engine. Cube? Cube. All right, call this cube the prototype. Prototype. The prototype. Okay, and um, and this is the one I want you to put a material on. Let's make it like orange so we can definitely see it. Bright orange. Create a new material. Surly says, Mom, Dad says I need a new computer. Can I, can I please? Kimball doesn't say please. He doesn't. I'll wash the dishes every day for a whole year. Oh no no no! I I never made I never made that agreement. I don't know. It seems like it's right there. You're gonna have to do something. All right, you got that bright orange. I like that kind of an amberish orange. Oh, did I not? Dang it! Ugh. What happened? Oh, you know why? It's it's it. Look at the in yeah the box inside. That determines your saturation level. Good. I like it. Okay. Okay. All right, sweet. And drop that onto our prototype. prototype. Good. Where is that prototype? I don't see it. It's right Cl here. Click on the prototype and let's actually put it off screen. I want it like, uh, I want it behind the camera, I think, or something like that. Okay. So click on prototype over here and then let's Position go to its transform. And let's make it like a negative, it's Z at negative 501 or something like that. Negative? You, I think you can hit the tab key here to go from one to the other. Oh, wait, we're doing C. And then, so make this negative 500. I just want this Ooh. far away. All right, cool. Oh. Maybe you make it 502. All right, it's behind the camera now. 504. Good. Okay. Now, the prototype is going to be a, uh, it's going, we need a, to give it a, uh, we need to give it a rigid body so it interacts with the physics system, right? Yes, we do. So do that. We, do we want it to use gravity or no? Yeah, use gravity. 
because I'm going to have a drop down <laughs> from the top. On next week's show, Campbell, I want to set it up so that when it collides, it turns off gravity. So you have these cool explosions where they just shoot out. Okay. Or do you want to do what we were talking about for the other game and um, make it so that it turns into a bunch of little blocks that don't Ooh. use gravity? Yeah, we could do that too. Either way, we'll do either one. Um, okay, so we've got the rigid body on it. Yeah. Now what I want to do is I want to create uh, a new script, which is going to be like our game script. For what? It's going to be, it's going to have the logic of our game in it. We're going to drag game it, I think, logic. to the player. We're just going to call this game logic or something like that. Logic. Ah. And then hit enter on it. By the way, this part seems really important to get this right. It seems like if you give it the wrong name initially and then try to rename, you're looking at a restart of Unity to get it to figure out the new name, I think, it seems. Um, now we've got game logic. I think I want to drag that on our player is what I think I want to do. Or do we want to do it in an empty object? No, I want to do it on the player because I want to know where the player is. Can't add script. While compiling. It looks like maybe it doesn't you hit the compile. play button. We can't ship it. Oh, man. It doesn't compile. We can't ship it. Um, is it the fact that we didn't open it? It may be because we just added the script and it's taking a while. To load. To load. Oh, 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 Lassiman's got a great suggestion. You can create an empty game object and put the game logic that's, on that's it. That's what I was saying. I oh, said. Oh, well, sorry. Lassiman clearly. Do, we, do what you want to do? Don't, shouldn't we do it on an empty game object? And you were like, no, because I want to see where the player is. I do, but that's all right. No, we'll put it on an empty game object, and then we will drag the player onto it. We'll add a property so we'll know where the player yeah. is. So let's create an empty game object. Oh, apparently the script isn't on it yet. Create empty, I think. Is that it? Game and object. let's call this the game, I it's guess. The game. Uh, this is a message uh, for you, Campbell. It says, Campbell, if I were you, I'd speak to my agent uh, to see if they can get you a better co-host. <laughs> Surly Dev. I would recommend, recommend Lori, Rory Becker or Lassiman. Well, currently my co-host is my agent, so I don't think that would work. Ha ha, I'm his agent. Sucker. Okay, two versus one. Mark, we win the vote. Um, listen, I'm the guy deciding whether or not this guy's getting a new computer. So, And I think somebody's going to be washing some dishes. That's all I'm saying. I think I know my new dishwasher. And his name is Campbell. Okay. All right, what do we got? We got the game. All right, cool. Okay. Let's drag game logic onto the game. Game logic. Or is the true MVP the just game. saying? The game. Rory is amazing. He is the MVP. Ah, uh, wait, I should probably get rid of the script here. Oh, the script's. Oh, right, because it didn't work. Cause yeah. Okay. Game logic? Yeah. <clears throat> Now, in your other scripts, you've already got a transform, a property of type, tr I'm sorry, a field of type pr transform called player. It's, I think, in the camera properties. Camera properties. Wait, what are you talking about? You've got this, that line seven, copy that. Ba -ba -ba. Control C. Clipboard and then put it just here. Yes. Control so now we've got the player. Let's go over to Unity. Let's know. Let's create another field here. This one is going to be private, and it's going to be of type float. So type in V for variable, and then F for float. Space. And then space. Yeah. And then call this. Uh, What is this one Call this for? last drop position. Call it last drop position. Drop position. Good. I love it. Now hit enter to get out to the end of the line. Go down the next line and type in VI for a variable of type integer. We're going to do another, another one that's not public. 
and we're going to call this. Um, uh oh, oopsies, control Z. B I. Try to space. now. I space accidentally right hit enter. Okay, and we're going to call this num blocks to drop. To drop. Uh, not so. And set it equal to one. To drop. And let's change the set it say it equal to one. So just give it an equals one. Equals one. Good. And up above on the last drop position, let's set that let, let's change the name of that to last drop position Z. Because we're only caring about the Z position. Z. Yeah. And set that equal to like make it an uppercase Z. And set that equal to like negative 10. So it's behind the camera. Negative 10. I think. Okay. Now, we want to find, here's what I want to do. Every time, as we move forward, the player's Z position is changing. Every time we get like a certain distance from the last drop position, I drop want block. to drop a block. And the number of blocks I want to drop is the number that's right up there in number. So do we want to do like if uh, the delta z now from I want to see uh, if yeah if the delta z between um, the last drop position and the player's position. Yes, if, if that delta z is. Bigger what? than a certain number. Bigger or than equal, a certain number. Bigger or equal. All greater right. Yeah. Than or equal let's to. actually create. Let's create a, a public. Um, let's go up to the top again. Let's create a public property that's going to be that number, uh, and it's going to be distance. And then we're going to make this a float, I think. So float. Uh, no. What? I didn't put that. Control C. Can let me show you a, a fast C. way to do this. Oh, I put float. Select the whole line. Or you can do that. This is fine. Just keep going here, and I'll show you a faster way later. What is it? Okay, the, the what is it is to just type in VF, variable for type float. VF space. Yep. And then give this the name. This is going to be the distance between drops is what you're going to call this. Distance between. And it's no spaces. Uh-oh, right. I, I got it wrong. Blop, blop. Distance a between. And then alt right can get you out to the end there, or control right arrow could get you there fast Jumps, too. Jumps or drops. Drops. That was it. And then the nope. uh, keyboard shortcut for changing it from private to public. Yeah, it's it's alt up and down, but I noticed it doesn't mm -hmm. seem to be working with floats, and I think you're going to have to just click on that icon to the left of the word. Oh no, it's working for you. Cool. Public. It, was, yeah. it, it wasn't working for uh, for me sometimes. I wasn't sure why. So, uh, all right. So there you go. Distance between drops. Let's set that equal to like some number now, like 10. So 10 of my cube's distances, you know, maybe 20. So we've got some variables here. One of them's public. Distance between, or two of them are. The player position, distance between drops. Let's save and attach our player to the game logic. And then we'll come back and write the code. Why is why are the last drop positions Z? Why are they grayed out? They're grayed out because we're not reading them yet. We haven't used uh, them yet. So that's okay. Also, there's an X in the upper right of your screen. You can click on that right there to get rid of the uh, the warning. No more. Unity, come on, open up. Sometimes I have to like. Uh, treat my computer like a dog because it's so slow. Or not I love so it. Slow. I love it. But I'm like, no. That's the quote of the week. All right. Um, what do we got here? We have. It's assigned value. Is never the used game. Yeah, that's okay. Click on the game. The game. Isn't that it? Yeah. And it's got this script, right? There it is. Player position. All right. Player position. Grab player mm -hmm. and drag it. Player. Oh, okay. Got oh, I like to do this. You got a smarter, faster way to do it. I don't have to like hold it down. Okay, good. And now and it's more reliable, let's go back and we've got that that connected. Let's go. Let's save this. By the way, go into file and choose save here. So we're we've got it. Or we, we can just it. Control S, right? Oh, yeah, Control S, and that 
asterisk goes away up there. Okay, good. Let's go back into Unity. Uh, Visual Studio, actually. Visual Studio. All sorry. right. So yeah. we want to make we want to add things into the game. That's going to be that's kind of a physics instantiate, related thing. Right? What'd you say? Isn't the line for that instantiate? I think it is, but I was I'm, the, what I'm getting at though is should it be an update or fixed update? Where should we fixed add update, things? Fixed update, I think. I, and why do you think that is? Because um, oh 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 because because um, we're always we're constantly moving forward. Um, so at like one um, in update it will check like one one it will like check check. Or not like that, but slower than in fixed update. Uh, so if we want it to be more efficient and always drop it um, in the right place at the right time. We have a finer granular resolution in time. Fixed update is calling much faster. Yes. It's been called much faster. So we can just rename this to fixed update. Um, and cool. And now what we want to do is we want to drop it. So you talked about something called the delta Z. Z. So we need to create a variable here to represent that. So type in VF for variable of type float. Up here? No, right where you are. Okay. This variable is going to be a local variable inside the method. VF. No. Space. Bloop. And you're going to call it, what are you going to call this? Uh, this is delta Z. Okay. Delta Z. And I like to... Well, move it, I, move it. I know. I was going to say I like to start my local, my private variables. I like to make them mm -hmm. lowercase. Oh. Um, yeah. Uh, Marcus, voice programmer, says Campbell's computer is running like a dog with no legs. Marcus, voice programmer, that's it. We can't take this kind of. We can't. They can't be talking about our computer like that, Campbell, can they? I think they can. It is pretty. Okay, that's dog fair. No it's fair. Like. Campbell's right. Um, so we've got delta z there. And what is that going to be equal to? Uh, that is going to be equal to. Yeah, Surly Deb is like what? Is it one of those those sausage dogs? Those really long dogs with the tiny legs? Yeah, rolling. It is equal to. So what? How do we going to? How are we going to figure out the delta z? We need to. What are we subtracting? We need to subtract the current player's z position from. The Plant. last time we dropped. What? The last drop position Z. Yeah, see but no, 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 we need to see um, the, ch yeah, yeah, we need to subtract player position from last drop position Z, right? Yeah, I think it's the reverse of that. It, I think the order is correct. You're going to start with the player's position because that's always getting bigger, right? That's the bigger number. Oh, so it's player position minus last drop position. Z. Yeah, kind of that, but it's not exactly player position. I'm going to let you figure that out. There it is right there suggested so you can hit enter or position. Oh, is it player position dot position? I'm gonna let you figure it out. Po control space here. Control Try space. it, control space. Intellisense. Yeah, position, enter. Uh, minus. What's it called? Oh wait, it's player position dot position Z. Good. Good job. That's exactly blue, right. Blue, you would blue. get an error there that would say, sorry, I can't subtract a number from a vector. Yeah. Right? From a vector three. And then you'd be like, what? And then you'd have to go back and figure that out. But good job Minus, figuring that out. Uh, last drop position. Yeah. I'm just going to go up here. W. Uh, no, no, no. Ah. The blue. Try double click again. There you go. Control W. Also, don't forget, wait, Code Rush just allows you to click in it once and then hit Control C to copy. C? And then Good. you can. Minus. Let me show you one more thing you can do, by the way. What is it? Well, you, it's a code rush feature, but you, you have to kind of go back. If you get rid of, um, put the carrot back on line 20, get rid of last position C, double click it and delete it. Oh, shift. What? Double click and just hit delete. Select it and hit delete, whatever. So, so. Hit Alt plus Home. Now I know you, on your keyboard the Home is in kind of a weird place. Where is it? It's off to the side. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. It's in here. Can you do it? Alt plus Home. See that? 
Kodosh has dropped a marker for you there. Mm. Now put the carrot up on line eight, right? If you put the carrot up there, right? Here's the fast way to do it. You click it on in there. Now just hit copy, control C. Control you, C. Right, Kodosh will select it. Now hit escape, and Kodosh should pick that marker up if you have the option. And now you hit paste. Genius. Okay. Now we figured out delta Z. What's our next question? What's our if statement going to look like? If, if delta Z, then 10. Well, let's start. Let's write it down. Let's write down our if statement. Let's write down the pieces we know, right? Whenever we're doing like math or, you know, any kind of problem delta solving, Z. if you know, the, you can write down at least the parts you know and do it in small steps. I find it super, it's much better. So if delta Z yeah. is what? What are you comparing this to? Oh, it's greater than. Is greater than? Yeah, it's greater than. A certain number, 10, because it's uh, the distance between, is greater than distance between drops. Good. So fill that in. Oh, wait. <gasps> yeah, there you go. Home? Alt home? Because remember that because you always want to go back home, right? So alt home, come up there, control, control C, C to copy, and escape, escape. to get back, control and paste. V. There you go. So if delta C is greater than distance between drops, then, then, now at this point, if I'm not sure what to do, I'll do this. I'll hit the letter B for begin, for braces. Instantiate. Okay, but let's do this, though. Do me a favor. Hit the letter B for braces. Space. And then space. <gasps> okay, so and now then. it's just kind of... Now, because I'm not sure if I'm going to have one or two lines here or more. And so this gives me that freedom and it allows me to think here for a minute. So you I just, think. So you're saying instantiate. Let's see if we can get that to work. Let's, let's type in instantiate. If that just exists all on its own or not. I mean, look, I'm going to look that up while you type that in. And see if you, you tell me if you find it in IntelliSense. Oh, there it is right there. Instantiate. Is it there try, a dot? Try a dot. It looked like it was a class. Space. Maybe I was wrong. No, it was a method. It was a method. It was a, a method. method. It's a method that we're inheriting from mono behavior. See up at the top on line five, game logic descends from mono behavior. That method instantiate is up above us. Wait, something was just appeared. Game object. Oh, we have to put what we want to instantiate. You need to give it. Now look, what, see it takes. We need the, to make uh, another variable, right? Uh, yes, look, we do. Here? That this is going to be our prototype. Object, whatever it is. Yeah. Our prototype. But, but I'm not sure. I think it's going to be a mono behavior. I think it's going to be public mono behavior prototype is what I think uh, this is going to be. And you've got, you can drop a marker here, alt home, or you can spell it mono behavior. But if you want to spell it mono behavior, put a space between that and the next word so you get IntelliSense. Because IntelliSense is confused by the word prototype right to the right of the caret. Now come back and now if you type in a V, it should suggest a mono behavior. No? Control space might help, but it looks like you're, Done. you got it. All right, and then what do you need at the end of the Semicolon. line? Okay, so now we've got our prototype. Let's go save this and connect our prototype up. Oh, can I just put really quickly the prototype? You bet. D right here? Sure. Pro... Not there. Yeah? Inside the parens. No? It's... In uh, look. Inside the parens. It says object, whatever we want to put, um, dot instantiate. And it says... And then also inside Oh, the I see what you're saying. No, that object on the left, let me show you what that is. So the first object on the upper left of that, that first object is the return type. This returns an object. So when we call instantiate, it builds something for us. Okay? Ooh. The next object, just before the dot instantiate, that object is the class where instantiate is living. Okay? okay. Then you've got the parens, and then you've got the, argue, the parameters to that plus nine overloads, mean there are nine versions of the instantiate method that only change based on what you pass into it. So there's different parameters you can pass into it. Also, the, the error you're getting right here says no overload for method instantiate takes zero arguments. 
Your problem is that your arguments between the parens, you need to put something there. Yeah, we need to put something in the parens. So okay. notice it says here the first parameter. Well, actually, if you go into instantiate, you move over. Why don't you delete that space to the right of the word instantiate between the parens and the word instantiate? Right there. And then go inside, and if you hit control shift space here, it gives you one of 10. Now, if you hit the down arrow, you can go through all of these. If we just give it the original, right? It'll just drop it right over the original. If we give it a, an original plus a transform, it'll put it where we want to put it, okay? Yeah. So what we want to do is transform it is what we want to do. So let's come in here and let's say instantiate. And let's pass in the prototype. Okay. That's the original. Um, prototype. Prototype. All right. Dot transform. Uh, yeah. Do a comma. Oh no, wait. Uh, this is original. No, it's just the prototype. There's. We're not going to instantiate a transform. We're going to instantiate a whole prototype, which is the whole cube with the rigid body, all its settings. Uh. Now let's do a comma though. I want to give it a transform so we can actually see it. And let's just put, type in the word, um, well, let's see. Let's do player position. No, wait, let's just type in this. Let's type in new position here. Type and in the words. What's this going to do? Uh, we're going to make the, turn this into a variable. It's not going to do anything yet. We're going to create a new variable called new position and calculate it on the line above of this. Oh, and that new position is going to be um, the trans player position. It's, it's going to be of type transform. Plus, yeah. And then okay. it's going to be the player position plus a certain amount. <laughs> right, exactly. Okay. And let's do, let, I'm going to do one other thing, but first type in the name of it. New Call position. Call this new position. Do lowercase, start with a low. New. Mystic Soda is out there, says, yay, kids code. Thanks, Mystic Soda. Hello. Soda. And uh, Mystic Soda is, was just commenting on the, uh, uh, when we had that before, in fact, you've got it up right now, that the first is the return type, that's oh, the yeah. object, the second one is the class, um, the third is the method of the class, and the fourth is the parameters, the method, uh, and the fifth is how many overloads it has. Not on this one, in here we don't have that fifth one over here, but on the other one we saw it before. So now we've got new position, copy it to the clipboard. Control C, just hit copy on it because your yeah. carrot's in it. Control C. Okay. Now I want you before you, I want you to drop a marker here. Wait. Wait, here? no, I don't want to do this. Uh, drop a marker down in 25, down on line 25. We'll pretend no. where we're down there just because I want you to practice with the markers. And it looks like you've got insert overwrite turned on, I think, because of the blocks. What is that? Hit the insert key. Remember how we talked about this? How do I get rid of that? Look for the insert key on your keyboard. Oh, there okay, it is. Good. Work. You're back to normal. Just drop a marker here. Marker in prototype? Yeah, or? anywhere. It's just, just to get close because we want to get quickly back down here Alt again. Alt-home. Okay. Now I want you to go up to transform. And I want you to right-click on the word transform in line 7. And I don't remember if we did this or not already or not. Mm -hmm. Looks like we did it already. I think we created a hit escape to drop the menu and escape one more time to pick up the marker. Escape. Go up to the line above and hit enter. Enter. And now try typing in V, and I think it's X4. I think we created a shortcut for transform that was yeah, X4 or maybe XF. One of the two. Try VXF maybe. Oh. VXF. It was X4. It was X4? Try it. VX4. For X4. See what happens. That's it! So we made X4 be transformed. So now if we want a variable to type transform, now call it new position. Paste. Control V. Okay. So many seeds! Ah. Now let's set it equal to something. What are we going to set it equal, equal to? to? Oopsies, no. Well, we want to set it equal to, oh wait, it's the, it's actually, it's actually, let's, let's set it equal to, hold on, go back down into instantiate. I want to, I think we may want to work with a vector three instead. Um, hit Why? control, 
shift space here. Wait, Dad, why? Why, why vector three? Because yes. vector three is a position in space and a transform is also the rotation and everything. And I think we really only want to modify that. Ooh, okay. So let's put the carrots. Actually, let's do this. Uh, let me go. I'm going to live share with you. Okay. Is what I'm going to do. Because I, I, I want to finish this, but I feel like you are. Um, it's about ready time to shut it down. And I want to do that. I'm okay. So let me go live, live share. And it says joining. Just to show you my screen right up here. This is joining right up here. And uh, getting close. Joined. And now I want to see the code you've got. So I'm not seeing the code you've got. I think you... Are you sharing over here on... Am I? Yeah, it says you're here. It's sharing. It says I'm here. Try selecting one of the files there. Wait, Do I need to... Files. is not in a file. You're not in a file right now is what it's saying. Um, not? That's what it's saying, but it clearly looks like you're in that, that. I wonder why that's not working like I wanted to work. Drop down your sharing or double click on me is at least see if that works at all. I'm not sure if there's any kind of interactivity we've got there. Um, try doing, uh, try doing share, going to sharing. Menu and see which choice is here. I can copy link. I can Try doing the copy link again on this and give me a new link over in uh, Skype. Yeah, give me a new link over in Skype and uh, I'll take a look at that and see if that's going to help me get over there. Oh. Uh, something not working. Skype. Oopsies. Oh, okay, never mind. I got it. Control V. All right, I got a new link. I just clicked it. Oh, did I send two links to you? Nope, you sent me this one, which is the one plus the other one before. Um, Mystic Soda says, in case you don't know already, an overload is a different form of the same function. It has the same name and return type, but the parameters are different. That's an excellent explanation, Mystic Soda. Thanks for that. I appreciate oh, that. Oh, all we see is the cardboard box. Okay, now let's see what's going on. Yeah, now I got the cardboard box. I'm there. Do I have it now working? Yeah. This no, that's, is uh, that's me. your code. And this one is, says I've joined, but I don't see how I can see your files. Huh. Is it here? Here we go. Yeah. I just had to drill in. Is that what I had to do? Okay. Uh, all right. So let's see where we are. What? Which one were you working on? You're in game logic. player properties right now. No, you're in game no, logic. No, I'm meant to be in game logic. Okay. I don't know what happened, but all right. So you're in game logic. Let's go look at game logic here. All right. So here's where you are down there. I am going to. Um, so new position. Let me take over coding for a second. Is that okay? Yeah. Are you going to go ahead? Yeah, actually, this is fine. Go ahead and hit Control Space to finish it up. Control. If you're starting to type it in, let me show you. I'm just going to delete that. If I'm starting to type this in, Control Space should give me. Oh, it's not giving me uh, IntelliSense over here. But you've probably got it. So anyway, player position is here. Uh, but then now I want to do is I want to change the transform. I want to say. Uh, Ugh! Dang it! It just became blurry again. It did? Yeah. 
All right. But I think it's okay. I'm going to type it in though. It's going to look at look instead at the um Oh, the other one on at my the screen. live share. Look at look inside Whoa. of Visual Studio. Something weird. It's putting an error on everything. I'm that's okay because I'm still working on this. So we want to do a new vector three. I don't think I have added that yet. So we're going to create a new vector three here. And we're going to change the position of this. Um, I just realized my formatting is different from yours. We'll have to fix that before the next show. Um, the the vector three is going to be what? Can you stop making that sound? Oh, I'm, yeah, sorry. I'm just totally distracted by that. It's going to be... What's our position in 3D space? Our X, our our position y dot z. position. Now I've got IntelliSense mm -hmm. dot X. That's our X position. So this is the player X. And then our Y. That's and then the our Y. Z. And then the Z is going to be uh, Z plus some distance ahead for the drop which uh, I don't know, I'll say is maybe, uh, let's make a distance ahead to drop like that. Let's go declare that up above here. I'm gonna come right up here and I'm gonna duplicate this line, call it distance ahead to drop and we're gonna say that is equal to um, maybe 20. And that's my new position and then we're instantiating that in the new position. The Y actually is going to be uh, up above we got to get the height of this, so we might want to say plus uh, five, right there. Wait, why? Why do we want it to be higher? Why oh, do we want it? Because it's going to drop. Uh, yeah, we want it to drop. That's what we wanted to do. Um, and then, now this is all looking weird on my machine because of my indentation being different from yours. Uh. Um, I think let's do this. I'm going to change my indentation on my side like this. I'm going to keep mine because there's actually a value to this and I'm going to ch show you how to change yours on your side. Um, let's go we'll switch to your machine. Go into tools, options. Tools. No. Tools, options. And then we're going to find uh, scroll down to I think you're looking for languages. It's one of these big categories. Uh, wait, stop a second. I th maybe text editor. Text editor. It's up near the top under work items. Yeah, there you go. Open that. Click the click the arrow, the triangle to the left there. The triangle to the left of the word. Yep. And look now C sharp. Click the triangle to the left of the word C sharp. And then click on tabs. Tab size and indent size should both be two. Two? Yep. And then say keep tabs. This is the most important change of your life right here. What All is right. keep tabs? Keep tabs means it keeps the tab character. And convert to spaces means it'll add spaces instead. Oh, what? I was always so annoyed because I would have to do like backspace, 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 backspace. Yeah, you want to Even though I would just do like two tabs. Yeah. And then I would have to go back like tons of backspace. That's my son, kids. So all right, cool. click on OK right there. There we go. Now we have something we can talk about. Now it's all in the right position. It's got the code that I've added right here. And we're creating it. Let's run it and see if it works. Okay. okay it's saved. Let's run it. Oh, there's one thing we haven't done. What is it? it? This is going to, once it gets past a certain point, every time we call fixed update, it's going to drop a box. It's going to drop hundreds of boxes. Why? In seconds. Watch. Let's see if it drops in. First, if it drops a box, that's good, because that means instantiate is working. Don't. We have to get past a certain point. And then when we, let's think about the why if we see that happening. Not seeing it drop anything. All right, so let's debug it and figure out why. Are you okay to keep going, Campbell? Because we're at about two hours. Do you want to keep going or sure. do you want to? Okay. All right, so let's go back and debug it because we can we can end it any time and we'll pick it up just wherever we left off. No. But I think sometimes it's good to kind of figure out something and get it going if you can. So uh, in fixed update, 
I want to put a, let's do a debug line right after instantiate and see if we're seeing it in the console. Or before it, either way. Just go onto either one of those lines and type in DL. DL space. Yeah. So you get your debug line in there. It worked. Debug.log. And pass out a string that says instantiate. Right. Put it in quotes. Quotes. Good, good. No. It worked. Okay. Why is that not a default in Visual Studio? I immediately changed it. I think last night's talking about the tabs. The tabs, yeah. Well, I don't know why that is. But yeah, Kemble's got a brand new install, so we made that change. Um, the other cool thing about changing tabs from four to two is you get more code is on screen, which is great on a live stream like this. Uh, yeah. Good. I'm trying to get it to Unity. Okay, not. you're doing great, yeah. Campbell, by the way. Okay. All right, so we want to see, we want to get on the yeah. console window. Okay. You're going to love yeah. your new machine, buddy. So do we have a deal? You become the main dishwasher to pay for no. your computer? No. That was, that was Surly no? Dev. That was not me. I don't know. It's a pretty good deal. And the reason you use tabs, not spaces, is your colleagues with site issues. Uh, that's, I guess, if you're talking about the tabs Which being visualized, being there. Do we get anything? What are we getting in here? No, we're not getting anything. The object anything. you want to instantiate is null. Sweet. That was before. That's a great message, though. Now, because that means we didn't drag it. Is that right? We didn't drag our prototype onto the to the, the game script. Oh. Right? Oh. Yeah. You're trying to create nothing. Uh. All right, let's drag it over. Which uh, is pretty hard. What? Oh no. Select mono behavior. The prototype should be in the list. Did it work? It's not allowing you to drag it. No, it's What's not. What's prototype? It's maybe not in mono behavior. Click yeah, on it's prototype. Not mono what is it? Let's find out what it is. What is it? it? Is How do we tell what its class is? Hover, can you hover over prototype over on the right, left in the um, yeah, hover over it. Does it say anything? Are we getting hints on it? Is there a pro you right click it? Is there a pro Rename, duplicate, delete, copy, paste, blah, blah, blah. What were the mono behaviors? When we clicked on it, when we clicked on it, what were the ones that were mono behaviors? It was player. Go back and click on it. It's the game, right? The game. wonder, is it in the code? Nope, this is... Okay, so it's not mono behavior. I think it's because those all have scripts. I think that's why those are being suggested. So use game object. There we go. That's Lassimat with the win. Lassimat just helps us out there. Game object? Yeah. Use game okay. object instead of mono behavior. So in the code, when we have that field, we've said it was a type mono behavior. That essentially meant it was a script. Uh, that was a bad suggestion from me. Bad, bad dad, bad dad. Okay. Yeah, uh, last time that's the future co-host. Hey, look, we're just doing our best here, kids. Uh, so up on line 12. Line 12, yes. Not a mono behavior, a, a game, game object. object. So that's good to know. Thank you, Lassimat. Thank you, Lassimat. Future co-host. Sweet. Now. Oh, it says we have to. We we don't want we don't want friends there. Get rid of the friends. All right. Uh oh, it's, it says something's wrong. I uh, bet it's got to try it with a low lowercase o. I bet there's a. Oh wait, no wait, no. no it's it, it looks okay. It just took a moment. Okay, good. So save that. Control S. Surly Dev says, "Doing your best." I agree. Come on, Surly Dev. I'm going to win the dance party next week. All right. Um, what you got? Back over to, to Unity. Unity. Yeah. Dance battle. Dance battle. We've got to, um, you got to drag it. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. 
Good. So yeah. now the prototype is the prototype. That should work. And now let's run it. Now. This time I'm winning. I'm going to plot some moves you haven't seen before, Campbell. It's going to be over before you know it. Here comes my move. You ready? Oh. Oh. Ah. Again. Guess you'll have to wait till next week. Next, next week I'm going to win that. I'm going to win that. Pudding says, I heard dance battle. What do we got? Is it running? It's running now. Can you clear the console? Yeah. We're waiting for it to start up. I think we're going to see hundreds of these things. All right. So at some point, we're going to start seeing these drop. If it's working. Uh-oh. Oopsies. I did something. I didn't see any of them drop at all. Nothing dropped. All right, let's go back and see why. It might be that I fell off of the board. Totally. What else do we have to do when we're adding an option? Let me look up Instantiate over here and see if I can figure out okay. um, what we have to do. Unity, Instantiate. Oh, do you want to share your screen? An show? object? Sure. Here we go. In C Sharp. I'm going to type in a game object like that. Yeah. Got some instantiates, looking for, that all looks like similar to what we've got. Huh, Dad, I started getting the debug logs, um, but after the track ended. Oh, that's great. Let's go figure that out. Why is that? That's really good information. Oh wait, is it the number of uh, locks to drop? We haven't used this yet. No, it's not that yet. It is... Wait, what are we going to use that for? So some point, Delta Z starts getting big. But it's not till it gets to the end of the yeah. track. Why don't we make that number smaller then? Where is it? Delta Z is bigger than... Distance You have to make it smaller here. Why don't we make this like three? Well, it doesn't make sense because your track is like a thousand. I'm trying to figure out what's, I think there's something else yeah. wrong. But let's go ahead and try it. Clear the console log. Or I think there's a way to clear it. Yeah, there it is right there. Clear the console log and run. And let's watch the console log and see when they start to drop. Ah, oh, frack. Dang it. All right, we might want to get rid of those guys. Yeah. Next week, we'll put barriers on the track. And maybe make it so that we can move left and right. Oh, yeah. And make it so we can move left and right. That'll be perfect. Okay. All right. So now let's try it. The d debug log messages will help us see what's going on. Uh -oh. Thank you, corners. That's your mom. Check pause and says, thank the corner. He's in the house. Yeah, again, it only works when, it, when we got off the track. It's only when we go off the track? Yeah. What's wrong with the Z? Like, it's look. like we're looking at, it thinks we're looking at the Y, but it's the Z. Isn't that weird? Let's go look at the code. It's as if we're looking, working with Y, the Z, wait. not the Y. Is oh, R? Wait. it started at the beginning. And then, look. forward. Is this moving? I can't tell if it's moving yeah, or not. Yeah, it's moving. It is? Just, we don't have any obstacles to see what's going by. See? And then bam. Okay. Let's, uh... Player position Z. Oh. I think I know what the problem is. Look up at, go click on the player and look at its position in Unity. The player? See the Z? Yeah. What's that number? Negative 500. Okay, go back over to the code now. 
knowing that the player's position is negative 500, look at line 23. Player position Z, negative 500, minus last drop position Z, which is negative 10, is negative 510. So we have to do plus. Is that going to be distance between drops? Right. Well, the last drop position Z, you got to make that negative 510 up there in, in the line 8. It's not until we get over at the end that it's making sense. So we've got to set this to negative 510. Yep. I think this is going to now fix it. Okay, control S. And it's still broken. I'm predicting this is going to drop hundreds and hundreds of these things. Once that happens, do you want in the show or, or do the uh, show me something cool? I, th I think I want to. Yeah, we can. Get it to drop. I think I want to just figure out why. Just look at it for a second and figure it out. Is the bar, the bar is negative itself, right? Um, what? It just went to the end of the track. That's odd. Um, design Patterns is asking, is the variable itself negative, right? Negative 500 minus 10 is negative 490. Yes, it's still negative, at least it was. Oh, we're jumping now. I'm sorry, I was looking away. I was reading what Design Patterns was asking. It's okay. Let's, let's look at it this again, Campbell. Can you... The code? Yeah. When does it work start showing up? I want to see if there's any difference. So what's they happening now with up, last, last position Z being negative 510, we're now doing negative 500 minus negative 510, which means it's now going to be delta Z as positive 10. Distance between drops is greater than... We should see it worked much sooner. Can you try that, Camel? People are trying to talk important stuff here. Surly, come on, man. Oh, Surly's fine. Okay, can we? Do, we're doing it again. Did you hit clear yeah. on on uh, the console, or is it? I don't know if it clears automatically when we start. See. It looks like they're coming out at the beginning. I'm not sure. So, are you telling me that the game is looking like it's just? It's that the player position is jumping. Oh, wait, I know why it's happening. I know exactly what's going on. Let's go back into the code. This has to do with something called references. I want to go down wait to... Wait a minute, I saw that in tools. Yeah, so here's what's happening. References. Hold on, Let, let's, talk, let's just look at the code for a second. On line 26, we say transform position is equal to player position. Yeah. We transform new position is equal to player position. That's the position <gasps> of the player. The player then position. look what we do. Even though we've stuck in another variable and we're modifying the other variable, we're also modifying the player's position. We're now telling the player that the player is going to jump up by 5 and move ahead by 10. Right? Then we're going to instantiate a new piece right there at the same spot as the player. So we want to do new position. Oh. But what I want to do is, that's why I want to look for a transform. I want to look for an alternate uh, version of instantiate. Let's switch over to my machine a okay. second. Um, and let's go look at the, uh, let's go look at that code. Uh, I want to see something that is, do I have, I want to see what other options I have here. What's well, taking a while to load these up. I wonder if, Fixing your machine so your machine is faster will also make this faster. The I'm code? looking for alternates to, to instantiate that take just a transform. Oh, wait. E dark theme. Seven of ten. Okay, here we go. So we have. So I'm, I'm just using the up and down arrow to look through these. So I have original transform. Oh, I know what we could do. I'm going to do this. Do I have a version of this that takes in the game object to what? say the type? This is like a way, and I don't know if this exists or not. It looks like it might exist. And now what I want to do Oops. is yeah, I want to say uh, variable of type game object. We're going to call this game object. And now this is what I'm going to do is equal to that. We'll call this the new, the new drop right here. Oops. <gasps> the new drop. 
like that. And then I'm going to modify, instead of modifying instantiate, it's going to kind of clone things, Campbell. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, instead of doing this, instead of doing all of this, I'm going to make this be player position. And then I'm going to say new drop, draw transform. And now I'm going to modify transform by setting its position equal to what we've done. And now we've got something closer to what I think we thought was going to happen. It looks like we don't maybe need this. Maybe Instantiate returns a game object. Okay, sweet. So let's try this, Campbell. Run that on your side and see what that gives us. Okay. And One so, second, it's importing. We did and a so lot of code. Instead of changing the player's position now, we're going to change the, the instantiated object's yeah. position. And then it's going to be time for show me something cool. Show me something cool. Do you want me to yeah. do it now? Or no, wait. I was no, going to no. say while you're waiting, but it looks like you're gone. Uh, field num blocks to drop is assigned to this value never used. That's okay. We're going to, we're going to work on that. And I think we're going to see a whole bunch of these just dropped in front of us. And I think it's going to be a little crazy. Oh, yeah. There you go. Okay, why are they dropping like crazy is the question. Look at them. Look at that line of boxes that's that's dropping. That looks so cool. Yeah. All right, stop the game. Let's figure out why. Yeah. Can we do that and then we'll end the show? Yeah. And I was going to talk I was going to talk about for loops on this show, but I think we'll save that for next time. Is that cool with you? Sure. We'll make this show about uh, Oh, also uh I forget. Did you say uh Ooh. what static is? Oh, I think no, I haven't. Let's talk about static, too. I'll talk about that as well. I'll do it when it's my turn to say, show you something cool. Um, last night's got a couple of suggestions for us, by the way, Campbell. Look at this. Later neon ident dot identity. Campbell, look at, look at yeah, my, I see my screen right there. Prototype new vector three. So that's my transform. X, and then the quaternion, as I understand, is the rotation. So quaternion dot identity means it's just in the, it's like the identity being one, the identity property of multiplication is one, meaning if I multiply it by it, it's always gonna be the same. I think quaternion identity means it's, it's facing the same direction every time. Okay, so it never wrote. All right, so he also says, he says that's how you usually do it. Uh, so it's uh, uh, instantiate object position comma rotation. That's what I would be simpler than what we're doing. Uh, yeah. I think we'll fix that for next time on, on next show. Um, and he also says it's always a nice idea to log the values of computations so you actually see the actual result, not the one you think it should be. I think that's a good tip, especially if something's not working. Okay, so now, so he's saying log the values. The question is why is, even though we say debug log, it worked, why isn't it working? Why is it, why is it creating them every time we make a call to fixed update? And this may not be fair to ask you because I know you seem like it's you've already been going for two hours and it, it feels like a good time for a break. And if you yeah. want to break, go ahead and say it. But but think about that if you might, if you want to. Every time we call fixed update, once we pass the distance between drops, every time we come in here, we're getting it worked and we're generating a new block. Uh, design Pattern is asking, are you creating a new drop on each frame? Yeah, we're kind of creating it. What we want to do is create it every time we pass a certain distance between the drops. And how are we calculating that delta Z? Look at line 23, Campbell. The clue is there. And another clue is if you put is the... It the fact that last drop position is always the same. Is it yes, constant? it is. If you put the Wait, carrot. Wait, actually? Is that it? Yeah, that's it. If you put the carrot in last drop position Z, let me show you something. Just click inside it. Hit the tab key. This is Code Rush's tab to Nix reference. This is a great tool for figuring out what's going on. It takes you up to the top and then tab again. Keep hitting the tab key. It's only used two times. Yeah. 
right? Oh, so wait, do we want to do another line of code that's saying last drop position Z is equal to last drop position Z plus a certain number? Well, we can actually just set it to player positions dot Z. What? Look at the line of code it's on. 23. We can set last drop position Z equal to the player's position. Oh, okay. Plus distance ahead to drop if you want. Like that. Or whatever. The last drop position. It doesn't really matter. Um, it doesn't matter too much. So, How but old yes, we, do we need that? to set that. How do we do that? We'll copy to the clipboard, so hit Control C. Ah. Bloop, Control C. Yeah. And then now the question is what line of code do you want to put it on? I feel like we should do it right here. Uh, that's what I thought you felt. It's not there. If we make the change, remember, code is executed in the order it's seen. Okay? Oh, so we want to do it at the bottom? Well, you can do it you can do it anywhere inside this block, but you don't want to do it outside of this block, the if block you're in right now. Because here's the thing, if the distance is is the delta z is greater than it, then we want to drop it. What? This is not making sense, I think, right? No, I want you to think about it instead of me me saying anything. So let's try it. Let's try it where you want. we can try it up above and see what happens. Well, what do you think is going to happen? If we put it, well, let's try it. We can easily copy the line of code. Let's put it here first and, and, and talk about that. So let's talk about that. Say last drop position. Control V. Equals. Is equal to. And then just copy that right beneath you. It's just move down and copy that player position dot Z. Player position dot position dot Z. Oh, That's what you want. Control C. Not quite. Uh, uh, control C won't quite get it for you, but you can use Control W, w to increase the selection. W. Now hit control copy. Control C. Now Come up, up here. and paste it. Control V. Yay! Okay, so let's and semicolon. Ah, no, not that. Semicolon. All right. So you're the computer. You're hitting line 22, right? You're like, okay, bah. no worries. You hit line 23. Last position Z. That's equal oh, to player. Oh, then it's zero. Right. That's why I can't put it here. So let's copy this whole blah, line of code blah, and figure blah, out where blah, it goes. Blah, 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 blah. Control X. All right. It doesn't go there. Where do you want to put it next? <laughs> you put it there. I'll be the computer, and we'll see what happens. <coughs> oh, you can put it there. That's the winning piece right there, I think. Um, and now you've got uh, anywhere, in fact, anywhere inside this if block would work. If you put it outside the if block, you're going to add it every time, and uh, I don't think you'll ever, I'm not sure what will happen exactly then. But you only want to change the, set the drop position when the drop actually occurs. Yeah. All right, let's run that and see if that works. Control S. Control S. Don't forget, a good tip, kids, is to save in Unity. Right, Campbell? Always save. Always save when you're in Unity. And um, I would suggest as soon as you're done with Unity, close it, save it. Um, because what I did is I, I restarted my computer at one point, and uh, it didn't ask me if I wanted to save because I wasn't directly closing down Unity. And so it just closed Unity without saving. Yeah, so see that asterisk? Put see this all together. Yeah. Show them how they can tell if it right needs saving. Here? Yeah. Uh, that star, it's like in Visual Studio. Um, it, so will, it tells you you're, it's not saved. So if you just hit Control S, then that, see it went away. All right. Are you hitting play? No, I, I just did. All right. And then we're going to do Show Me Something Cool. Show Me Something Cool. And then we're going to, uh, and then we'll end the show. And we'll rate another show. Hopefully um, uh, we'll get a good uh, live coder out there. Yay, it worked. Uh, nice. Kinda. Oh, yeah, it did. Uh, that that kind of looks like it's working. My jump is super high, though. It's putting them at the same Y height as you. Uh. It's kind of interesting. I'm not sure why your jump is so high, though. But that's kind of cool. Um, they don't look like they're falling down to you. No, I think it's just I'm going so fast. They don't have time to Did we say use gravity on those guys? Yeah, we Do you did. think they don't have time to fall? I'm, they're um, using gravity? Okay. Yeah, I think they are falling. It's just I get past them 
before they can. Let's look at the code and let's change them. the, let's change, let's tweak a couple things in the code. Make. Um, wait, wait, wait. First, I wanted to, I want to just make this, uh, force. Just. Your jump force is 100? Whoa. Mm -hmm. I'm going to drop that down too. I thought it was like three or something. What was it at? I don't remember. I'm not sure how we're using that. If it would also, I think I had a different jump code than you. So if uh, you could, uh, I forget. And I think yours worked better. But yeah. Okay. Code. Okay. What do we got here? What are we doing here? What I forget why we're here again. Oh, let's take out uh, line 29. It worked. We don't need that anymore. Oh, yeah. the the plus five. I was going to suggest dropping this number down. Uh, we might want to just make it bam there. Or no, no, because then it wouldn't drop. Oh, no. Like a yeah, two? maybe make it two plus two. Let's try those two changes and see if that works. Also, the distance ahead to drop, that's a property I think we can change on the game and make it drop further ahead of us so it's got more time to land. Next game, too, we can make them spin or something if we want to. Or maybe not. We could do stacks. I was thinking stacks of blocks. Okay. Now it's got more time. And we would really like a way to move. Yeah. All right. So that's cool. All right, kids. Now it's time for... Show me something cool. I, no, I was gonna. I got you going first, just in case we pick the same thing. And if we pick the same thing, I want you know it's, it's. Uh, I want I want you to be the one who goes first, just in uh, case. Okay, so, <clears throat> you know how uh, we I think we've done it on the show already. We've made changes while we were playing, right? And we didn't notice we were playing until afterward, after we made those changes. Yes. So we had to stop playing and then make those changes again. Well, yes. if you hit edit. And then down here, preferences. Yes. In general, there will be the play mode tint. And then ah. this. And you can change the color when you start playing. So and, and what's that change? That changes the color of what? The color of everything around. Oh, this. okay. That's awesome. So now, uh, if we start playing, look. <laughs> oh, wow. That's so much better than my tip. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah, my tip's going to be really sad compared to that. You're going to be like, you did not do your work. You lost the dance contests. You lost the show me something cool competition. Um, Lassamed says, that is something cool. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. All right, here's mine. Mine is not that exciting at all. Uh, I'm going to start crying now that I think about it. Um, hold on a second. Let's get over here to Unity. Um, you can, here's my tip. Uh, let's go click on like the cube. Um, you can come in here and you can say things like, uh, an expression like three times three. Oh, you can? Yeah, I can do that. Three times three like that. And three times three, if I want to. Oh, like I that. didn't know that. You know, or I can say three times, you know, I could say like 10 times, uh, you know, 25, right? Like that. So I can do those kinds of things. I can put expressions here. So, I don't know, not as good as yours. Yours is so much better. All right, next time, I'm going to work harder. All right, kids, uh, that's been an episode of Kids Goodbye. Code. Goodbye. Uh, let me do a... Let's start uh, a raid. Let's do a raid. Yeah, let me go hit the right buttons over that to get that raid going out there. And uh, let's see who we got from the... Uh, the uh, Live coders. The stream team out there. So, Lana Lux, we can go send it to her. She's kind of interesting. She does game design. And um, we'll go uh, do that, kids. Um, thanks so much for being here. Thanks, Lassa Matt. Really appreciate it. Design Patterns, Mystic Soda, Sex Positive uh, with the Campbell's Cooler. Um, La uh, let's see. Lassa Matt, I think we said thanks to you. Design Patterns. Uh, who else is out there? Sana, thanks to the Retro CRT. And Surly Dev, of course. Appreciate everybody. All right, kids. We will uh, we'll see you next time on Kids Code.